Boom, 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 boom. We survived the eclipse. Who would have guessed? Only one person died. It's not bad. Is that for real? There was a plane crash and a death. But other than that... Related to the eclipse? Yep. Oh. I'll share sucks. it with you. For the most part, we're here, plus our experiences. Did you have a good experience with the eclipse? I didn't even look at it. Okay. <laughs> you forget it was even happening? No, I just didn't have glasses, and I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to go outside for the most part. You didn't trump it? You didn't bareback it? No. Okay. No, I didn't bareback it. <laughs> no, I got binoculars, and I stared right into it. <laughs> I just came up with just now. Deep, that was good. A little Stephen Wright joke. I'm going to take a pair of binoculars and just stare into the sun. <laughs> uh, Morgan Wallen arrested again. The Dude. Supreme Court. Well, that's Supreme Court. Yeah. Supreme Court. <laughs> um, the Supreme Court uh, has to rule on Trump and his uh, I'm the president. I can do whatever I want law. Where does he come up with that? We'll talk about that because uh, the special counsel just uh, filed his retort. Sounds so, delicious. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, recap the eclipse from today. Uh, reminder that the 420 show will be a members only show this Friday. Join now. If you are not a member, you can do so for as low as two ninety nine. You deal. can't even get a Snapple for two ninety nine anymore. I mean, it's crazy. They are expensive. This was on sale today, so I got lucky. Yeah, that's the equivalent of one, two, th roughly three Arizona iced teas. How those guys kept it at ninety nine cents all these years, I'll just never know it. What is the deal there? I don't know. Uh, plus, J. Sabs portrays Frank and I in the worst way one can imagine. And uh, it's not listed on here, Frankie C, but we will have a blind top five and a new segment called One Has Got to Go. This has been bugging Boom. me for quite a while. Yeah. New segment. One what? You'll see. You'll see. Ugh. You'll all see. The suspense is killing me. I'm very proud of One Has Got to Go. I think everybody's going to be on my side on this one. I like when you don't run things by me. It's nice. <laughs> I like when I think everybody's going to agree with me, and then nobody does. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a thing, not tell anybody about it, and it's going to be it's going to be aces every time. I'm like everybody's going to be on board with this, and then it doesn't really go that way ever. Yeah, this is going to be a big bomb. We'll see at the end of this thing. Oh. <laughs> It's going to be a big bomb. We have to discuss the Discord, too, because there's animal stories on there. Robin's Nest is filled with great videos. All kinds of fun happening on the Discord. Yeah. Let's let's, put, let's add the Discord to the list. There it is. And the Discord, we'll if you will. Yeah. Uh, Frank, let's go to Morgan Wallen. Arrested once again. Nashville bar. He chucked a chair. Chair chucking bastard, man. What the he hell is, is that about? He is a chair chucking bastard. Who's this chucker? <laughs> so <I thought. laughs> what, um, what is that about? What was? Who throws a chair? This guy. Here's what I like about Morgan Wallen right off the bat, and I know what some of you are thinking, and no, it's not the blatant racism. Oh. Um, I like that we have at least one, probably more if we think about it. I like a drunken, out of control rock star. I feel like we're better with one of those around. Like he's going to trash the whole. Days. Thank you. Like back in the day, we had Motley Crue, we had Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses. Like you, like no hotel room was safe. They were just fucking shit up everywhere. That like Metallica, Metallica would fuck everything up. You know, back in the day. Now yeah. everybody goes and does a rock show and then comes off stage and has a fucking grass juice and a fucking yoga mat session and they fucking fall asleep at 11 30 well, it's not fun at anymore dave matthews concert yeah <laughs> well i don't know what the, dave's disappointing too he like rides his bike for two hours before a show around i think the, lars jogs around the stadium a couple uh, times these health conscious fuckers and they're just <laughs> trying to keep it going which i get because i'd be heartbroken without metallica or dave matthews but I mean, get fucked up and break some property. I'm not. I, 
I'm not a big fan of the racism. I would prefer if they don't harm another human being. I'd really right. be on the side of not harming another person. Yeah, but none of fucking that's some good. shit up is just classic old school rock you and roll think, shit. I mean, what what's the like? You're you're a hotel chain back in the '80s and '70s, and you all of a sudden the tour manager for Metallica goes, "Hey, we want to book a room, a couple of rooms at uh, at your hotel." Do you are you like? Uh, yeah. I Metallica. Could... Oh, uh, ooh. Let's see. Uh, we're all. I think we're booked up. I don't. Uh... Or do you give them like the? Ah, oh, we're gonna trash this room anyway. Kind of room. Oh, good point. Let's give them the one that we have to remodel, and they can pay for it. Yeah, they could just. They'll pay for it, and they'll destroy it, and we're halfway there. Yeah, I bet you it's a lot of. Don't worry, the guys are doing really well. They're gonna come in. They're gonna be fine. You don't have anything to worry about. And then the hotel manager is like, Fuck, I should have never believe that guy. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. The, the insurance alone, how do you? I mean, I, I'm sure they're insured for that kind of thing, but I think you got to buy asshole insurance for sure. Yeah, if you're right. a tour, do they have to keep a credit card on? Did they keep a credit card on oh, file? Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Two. So, the, so they had to pay for that. The, the band had to pay for the destroyed hotel room. We're gonna need two credit cards on this file, please. Okay, <laughs> gotta load this up. Uh, everybody's credit card. Everybody, everybody, put a credit card down at the table here. Because I'm not do, going through this again. Credit card now. Let's go. Yeah, let's get a credit card for the table. Let's get it. Right. Um, anyway, uh, so he was in uh, Nashville Sunday night, and um, Fox News can confirm oh. he was arrested and charged with three counts of reckless endangerment and one count of disorderly conduct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he threw a chair what, off a rooftop bar or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Just tossed it, which is not. Again, I like a trashed hotel room. Even if you're gonna fuck up a bar a little bit, you throw a chair off a, the side of a bar, you know, over a a roof there, and somebody could really get hurt. What was that? Why? What did he? Why did he do that? So I read something somewhere that said that I guess his ex girlfriend. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong here. That his ex got married, and supposedly that's what led to him going out and getting fucked up and getting, you know, chair throwy, getting all chair throwy and whatnot. All right. <laughs> Which I totally, who doesn't sympathize? Empathize? Sympathize? I think it's sympathize. I think it's uh, ostracize. Got it. Um, jazzercise. It's jazzercise. jazzercise. <laughs> I can empathize with that. I mean, I kind of get it. I'm trying to think of the last time a woman got me so upset that I did something really stupid. I got to tell you, exes, what, like, don't you like root for them to get married? Oh, mine, I did. <laughs> right? I don't know about other people. <laughs> you're like, oh, thank God. Get away. Go away. Yeah. And you're, you're now occupied with whoever that is. Great. Good for yeah. you. You know, I got to tell you, um, one of my main exes, I was very happy to hear that she got married because I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure she was going to. So when she finally found somebody, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I was very happy for her, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, that's, that's good. Good. Stay. Yeah. Stay I just there. saw, I just <laughs> saw a life of aloneness, you know, just having been, she's a very nice person, but lots of limitations and complications and family stuff and i was just like when she finally found somebody i was like oh, good for her oh you were happy for her i was happy for her yeah yeah yeah. i was happy for her yeah i was I going at the other angle happy for me going great you got no, yeah yeah you're right i turned it and i i heard what you said the first time around i got you i got you. um but yeah i i um but there's a there was a little bit of that because i always feel like when you're the last one you're always the last one you know what i'm saying you're the last one until the new one comes Okay. You know what I mean? So until they find that next person, they're kind of... Well, you don't know if you were the last one, but I mean, unless you do, you didn't, you didn't have to be the last one. I just assume I'm the center of the universe. I don't know. It's kind of hard oh, to so tell. After, so after you, she found her husband, and that was it. There was no dating in between I think so, you yeah. and the husband. Okay. I mean, just, just uh, last episode, I assumed an earthquake happened entirely to me. I didn't realize everybody else felt it, so you know how it is. That's true. That's true. Things get tricky up in this brain of mine. You're a little anthro anthrocentric. <laughs> oh, you found a name for it. <laughs> you created a name for it. That's pretty good. I'm um, an anthropologist. Let me see here. Does anybody know if that was over his girlfriend? I'm an anthropologist. 
Thank you. Damn, that's two in a row. <laughs> that is two dingers over the fence in a row. Uh, shout two. out to Mercury. Two years. Wow. Being an AOA whole member. Nice. Thank you, Mercury. Appreciate that. AO. Oh my God. How would you say that? Happy AOA anniversary. AOA anniversary. AOA anniversary. I guess so. There you go. Um, what was the so, dumbest thing that you ever did? A check ever? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, so Mercury, along with any other member, is invited to join us for the 420 show. In the 420 show already. Got nothing to worry about. Yep. Got two years of that credit built up for the 420 show. Absolutely. What were you asking? What was this? What was the craziest thing an ex ever made you do? Made me do? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I think I... I never threw a chair off a roof, I'll tell you that. No, I never threw a chair off a roof. That really made me... Once it was over, I feel like that was pretty... That was it, you know? I never, like... Once they were, the, once they were an ex, I feel like that was it. I was like, all right, that's... That's that. I'm not... I don't... I never you really... Remember anything? I'm trying... To, I don't think I remember anything crazy. I didn't do anything crazy. I, I think I, I think I did most of my stupid things during the relationship. Exactly. You got, yeah. I think that's a that's a typical thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to... I remember once a girl was like... And this was the not-so-nice one. Well, they were... Well, let's keep our feelings aside, Frank. Let's not get into it. No comment. But uh, but I remember yeah. one of them got mad at me for something and was like, oh, it's over and blah, blah, blah. And I remember not feeling bad at all. We were in the city. We were in Manhattan. We both lived in Queens at the time. So she's like, it's over and blah, blah, blah. And she's getting all mad at me. And I remember just thinking, okay, just get back in the car and I'll drive you home and that'll be it. And she's like, I'm not getting back in the car with you. I'm like, no, really, your mother. What the hell will... did you do with her? <laughs> I, we were just arguing. I forget. What we, I, she, I, might, I don't know what I did. I don't know. Talk that to she some... wouldn't get in the car with you. I don't Why know. Would you... What the hell? I want to say I talked to somebody. I think this was during college. I want to say I was talking to somebody or I said like something like, Oh, and then like uh, you know, Kimberly was you know laughing like I like I was telling a story, and then I I think I feel like I said something about a girl that she hate. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, perhaps I was a little insensitive to her feelings about the whole thing, and mm -hmm. uh, and she was like, "It's over. I can't stand you." I don't even know. She was just screaming, throwing a big scene, which I honestly felt was a little much for what we were even talking about to begin with. But right. I just remember her going, it's over. You can forget it. I remember thinking, I'm totally okay with this. I just want to get you home so your mom's not pissed. <laughs> you know? And that annoyed her even more. That I wasn't like, I think she thought I you was You weren't all like, torn up about it? Yeah. Yeah. So did you end up driving her home? Yes. How awkward was that car ride? It was, I don't remember it. I don't really remember Blocking it. Blocking it out. Yeah, I can't. That had to be a, that's about a 30 minute ride. That was probably, it probably felt like two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. It was pretty bad, but you know what? It's good to get those bad ones out of the way early. You mm -hmm. want to have those bad relationships in college and in high school. And this way, you know what to avoid when it's time to get hitched up. You know what I'm saying? I think it was a good experience overall. You got, yeah. Remember your point. Oh, you got to experience all this stuff. Which, well, I believe, which I don't agree with. What? What, what did I say? Remember the, a couple episodes ago, you were like, "Oh, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta have all these experiences at a certain time." Oh dating. yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good to date somebody who's a psychopath. <laughs> it's really important. <laughs> it's kind of a, you just because you, you get the signals down, you get the signs and the signals, and then you could see like, "Oh, this one's like the other one. I have to avoid this altogether. I have to <laughs> stay away from this. This one's like the other one." Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Morgan Wallen, apparently it was about his ex, right? And that's what, that's the rumor. I Unconfirmed. So. We don't know if that's for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty, I saw an article and now I can't, I, I usually save them and now I can't find them in all the bullshit I got open so, here. So is he still in, in custody? Oh, that's a good question. I, I assume that he got, he got out on bail. I, I think they let you out pretty quickly. Okay, I don't know. Okay. In New York, you can kill five people and, and get out the next day. 
So I'm assuming the, Nashville is similar. I don't know how accurate that is. But, I mean, three counts of whatever the hell and one count of the other thing, That's he's got he's going to have to go back and I don't think he'll see jail time, but I'm sure there'll be some fines he's got to pay. Yeah, but people are saying that. The, so the the article that's so that the articles this morning were Morgan Wallen arrested. The articles being written this afternoon is the disappointment from fans in him because I think they kind of feel like, hey, the last one was a pretty big one with that big fat racial slur. Just just that was rough. It was a meatball. Just Oof. just out there, not good yeah. for anybody. No, not good at all. And I think kind of people were like, well, we can forgive we can forgive that one. You can have a bad night. This isn't as bad as that, I feel, but also kind of the same disregard for people. I think some people I think are a little hurt. Like, how many Someone, times is this guy gonna do this? Someone's got a real this guy in. Yeah, like I like my thing is I would love this guy so much more if it wasn't for the racial slur in the beginning. Like if he was just trashing shit and being a dick. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Now, the racial stuff is not good. Well, it's also country music. So you, you can, if there's a genre where you could slide with that. One, oh, don't, don't be, lump country music I'm into that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's not cool. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's oh, a, you're just saying. Well, if you're just, as long as you're just saying. They're a little more tolerant of the racism in that in that genre of music, I feel. Hey, uh, don't look don't. at me like the bad person. I'm just pointing out. See, now you're... I like how you're you're saying something like against racism as you're stereotyping an entire genre of, music, <laughs> of people listening to this music. It's country music fans. You can insult them. That's fine. They're, they're, oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, they kind of deserve it. Um, for all the twanging and my pickup truck you, they get a they get a little, a little clap they back they like to drive pickup trucks what do you want <laughs> what do you, i know what do you want from us right um also it was, up? it was i don't know it's a lot of hauling going on in the south let me tell you something it really drives me crazy the south is one thing i feel like they can pull it off but here on long island like i'm literally right next to the hamptons the amount of pickup trucks out by me is re I, like i stare at some of these people and i go you've never put a two by four in that bed in your entire what life are, what are they hauling around yeah, some people like if you're hauling some shit. Okay, if you got that kind of a job where you know you need a little, all right, if yeah. you know, you job. Need I get move. that. Yeah, okay. But like, I feel like people get the pickup truck for one big project, and now they're stuck with the pickup truck. It, well, well, maybe that is some of it. But for some of those guys, I feel like you could eat maple walnut ice cream off of that bed and not have to worry about getting sick whatsoever. Maple walnut ice cream? That's a Sopranos thing. Oh. Okay. Do you remember when Paulie goes, a, la a lady's room, you could eat maple walnut ice cream off the floor. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember that line, but it's a good one. Yeah. He's like, he's like a men's room. He goes, you ever walk in a men's room and your laces are wet? Now, why would they be wet? <laughs> like that? Men's rooms are, are, are garbage. No, they're awful. They're all terrible. Well, men in general, I think we can say. Uh, yeah, in general. Anyway, it was Eric Church's bar. That's the other kind of thing that's like rubbing people the wrong way. He's like in a buddy's bar and he's fucking trash and shit. Dude. Anyway, fuck that guy. All right. Yeah. Um, the Supreme Court. I don't Supreme Court. I don't want to get you fired up, Frank. I would like to move to this as quick as we can. Uh, good luck. But <laughs> but you uh, you do you do what you gotta do. I never want to stop you. Let's go. Um big story right now, trending on uh X. Everybody's kind of talking Just about pull Twitter. <clears throat> yeah, I. They're not gonna ever drop that Twitter thing, are they? No one's dropping Twitter. No one's calling it X. It's it's Twitter. It's Twitter, right? Yeah. X Twitter. I like the you people can't like. Just, you can't just occupy an entire letter of the alphabet and call it your own thing. Well, he's trying. Well, it's not working. He's trying. All right. Um, so what do you got? Anyway, uh, Jack Smith filed a brief with the Supreme Court in the immunity appeal from Donald Trump and his lawyers outlining an argument that's basically saying that uh, i'll read you the first couple of points here a former president lacks immunity from federal criminal prosecution for official acts during his presidency a a claim of absolute criminal immunity for former president's official acts violates established separation of powers principles b history supports the conclusion that former presidents are subject to prosecution for official acts C, criminal immunity for a former president enjoys no support from Fitzgerald's recognition of civil immunity. 
One, the interest in applying federal criminal law to all persons is compelling. Two, robust safeguards protect against the risk of improper prosecutions. D, federal criminal law applies to the president. E, the impeachment judgment clause does not make Senate conviction a prerequisite to criminal prosecution for a former president. And F, petitioner's understanding of Marbury and his other remaining arguments lack merit. Basically, what Jackson, let me boil it down for everybody. What Jack Smith is saying is a president gets immunity from a degree of a president's got to go out there and command the army to go and murder, right? You can't have the president arrested. You can't try him then for murder. I get that. However, this was not official acts. This was also, you know, stuff that happened that you're not supposed to do even as a president. You know, there's things you can do as a president that go under the umbrella of, you you know, war or, uh, you know, you have to do certain things. I get that. However, you can't just do anything. You have to operate within the guidelines of the law. So, yeah, the president has more power than the average civilian because they could control, they command an army, et cetera. More than but, a podcast host? Yeah, slightly. Okay, just a second. But you also can't just do whatever. You still have to operate within the confines of the law. Yeah, we, Nixon we, had to be pardoned. That's right. He did not get immunity. Nixon did not get immunity. Thank you, Paul. So, yeah, Nixon wasn't immune from prosecution. He just got pardoned. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, you can't just do anything. That's his... That's his big claim. Trump is like, I'm, I was the president or I, I'm a former president. I mean, right now he's a civilian. You're not the president anymore. All that stuff's gone. Even though they built an Oval Office in Mar-a-Lago, what are you saying? Uh, did they? Yeah. Oh, even though they packed the bathrooms full of documents? Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, there's things you can do as president under the, I'm the president and we have to get stuff, you know, we have to do things that operate within the code of this is how it's done there are official acts that need to be done of permissions you can't go to war without congress signing off on it that, this is checks and balances that go on you can't just do anything you can't walk in the middle of the street and, and shoot someone you can't rob a you know the fort knox you know there's things you can do and there's things you can't do and you can't just do trump's argument is i can do anything and that's a stupid argument Anything you can do, I can do better. That uh, that too. That's his argument, I think. Okay. Um, I I obviously I think I think he's grasping at straws. I don't think he has anything else to grasp at but straws. In this particular instance, I think it's worth a shot. If you're you know if you're standing there looking at that case, any lawyer is going to go. Uh, we might as well try this because we can't so, just go out which, there and be like, I, uh, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm also confused that which of the four huge trials against him are we talking about? Is it the hush money case? Is it the January 6th case? Is it the election interference? Or I forget, even forget the other, what the fuck the other, oh, the documents case. I, you know what? That's a great question because yeah, all that shit you can't do. <laughs> Even as oh, president, sorry, can't, yeah. you can't interfere with an election. You can't try to overthrow the government. You can't use, you know, campaign finances to pay a porn star off for an affair, and uh, you can't steal classified documents and keep them in a bathroom in your fucking hotel or whatever the fuck he lives. It's the election subversion case. Okay, so election interference. Sense. Yeah. Uh, I just need 11,000 votes. You got to get me 11,000 votes. It's like, no, that's not how it works. You don't just get, you know, you don't just find 11,000 more votes. Mm. So that's that. I'm going to say something, and I don't know if you can give me an honest answer because you just hate the guy. But I always give you an honest answer. Why wouldn't I give you an honest answer? I'm not going to lie. I'm not an unbiased. I don't know if you can give me an unbiased answer. Oh, it'll be biased, but I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, and I almost feel, I don't want to say this, but I feel it, so I'm going to say it, key to being a good podcast host, and I'm not going to say it loud, and I'm not going to say it again. I don't know if this election is going to be as close as being predicted right now. Which way do you think it's going to be? I 
I think I honestly feel that I don't think Trump is going to have as good a showing as people think and as much as the polls are predicting right now. I agree with that, too. And I think he's going to go through his whole it's rigged again and everything's, you know, it's all uh, fraud and everything's rigged against me. So it's an unfair election. There was election interference. He's going to go through this. He's tried. He tried. Everybody seems to forget. He tried to do that pre 2016 when he beat Hillary Clinton Mm. before he beat Hillary Clinton. He was ramping up the it's fixed. If we don't win, yeah. it's going to be a fraud and they're going to be. A, but then he won. So he dropped the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. There was no interference. Everything it was a good election. I won yeah. the president. Now, DJ Shenanigan and Christine bring up good points of basically that he's not the only one to keep documents around. There's Biden. a huge difference, though. Biden well, handed them over as soon as they asked right. for them. Right. Trump, if he would have handed them over, there probably wouldn't have been any problem. And most he, president, but he didn't. He was like, no, I'm keeping them. They're my documents and I'm keeping them. And he refused to give them back. They had to go in and the FBI had to storm his fucking place because he wouldn't hand them over. Mm. If he would have just handed them over, we probably we might not even have heard about it. Mm. And most presidents have done things in the course of their presidency that are not great or black eyes or blunders or whatever you want to call it. Um, maybe some bordering on illegal, you know, maybe some not. Um yeah, DJ Shenanigan, I'm not saying that every president was a saint, but, you know, what, well, what I'm crime... Well, i it up because I want to just say, he, he's not what alone. What crime did Obama commit? Was it the tan suit? Oh, I'll never forgive him for that tan suit. Honestly. Fashion faux pas. Before Memorial Day or after Memorial Day, whatever, whatever the, the hell. Yeah, it was a huge, huge scandal. Knew. Huge scandal. If I knew about that white rule on Memorial Day, it would have been a lot more helpful for that joke. Uh, but my point is, is that... It's, Labor Day, by the way. Given that they oh Labor Day, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> well, I really <laughs> fucked it up at a lot of levels. <laughs> <didn't I? laughs> um, given all the all the bullshit and all things are equal and all that kind of crap, I I have this teeny tiny feeling inside of me that is kind of bubbling up to the surface. That as close as it is right now, and as much as I'm looking at polls and things, and I'm seeing things like Trump's beating Biden in swing states and stuff like that. You know, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I've said this before and I mean it. The summer is going to tell us everything we need to know about this election. If the economy is good, the stock market's good. In the summertime, I think Biden comes back in. Uh, if it's not, if things go awry, I think that Trump can win. But there's something, I don't know. I don't see the outpouring of love for him the way I have in the past for shit. And I think that there's just too many holes. And I, here's the big holes, Frank, I think. It is January 6th. It is the lack of support for the police on that day. It is some of the shit that he said about veterans in the past. I think those things are not aging well. I think there's some people it doesn't matter. He's I don't understand that. Savior no matter what, and that's any, fine. Any other person running for president in the past uh, couple of decades if they would have did any one of those things it would have been the end of their campaign well he that changed the, the game. game yeah he changed the game and it's, would... somehow he could do anything and get away with it and, and he won't lose a supporter but i just think blows i just my mind i still think there's some leakage there that it's just i like i still i and again and maybe this is part of it too i get a lot of people that are like aunt he's great i love him i'm voting for him that's fine with me might not be fine with Frank, but I'm okay with it. I don't understand it. I just don't understand how you could look at it. Just pick one of those things. When just Here's a, a small example, tiny. Okay. When John McCain passed away, national hero, he refused to lower the flag. Be why? Because he was a child and he, and he just didn't like the guy. For like, I don't know how many days it was, two, three days, he refused to lower the flag. Then he finally gave in and lowered the flag. And his whole thing was, what? I gave him the funeral that he, that he wanted. It's like... You gave him the funeral. He was a senator for how many years? He was a war hero. Lower the fucking flag, you asshole. Mm, Are you yeah. kidding me? Mm -hmm. That's just one small thing. Yeah. And that 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 alone would have would have tanked anybody else's presidency or campaign. Yeah. Alone, that one tiny that everybody, we don't, nobody even mentions that anymore. But at the time, it was a huge thing, and now it's a blip on his whole career.
Yeah. Well, my my whole point to to put a bow on it is in the past, if we said something about Trump and I heard from a hundred Trump supporters afterwards, I feel like nowadays I'm only hearing from like 60. You know what I mean? Like I just, I feel, I feel like there's just a little fall off and I don't, I just don't know if he has the, the panache this time. I don't know if the, if the, the, the persona is going to play as much. And I also do think, and Christine brings up a good point. I don't know if she means RFK is a threat to Trump or Biden, because I think he's a threat to both, but I think he's a threat to both. I well, think yeah, there's always a third candidate that siphons votes from one or yeah. the other. Yeah, big time. And I think he's going to siphon off some of those people um, more so from Trump, I feel, than than Biden. I think you're right there. I, I don't think, I think he appeals a little more to the conservative side, I think. I'm not, I haven't followed him as closely, but I know he, yeah, I know some of the stuff that he says, and I think he veers more that way. And I don't think he's a big Trump fan. I don't think he's a big establishment fan. He's very much against that. But I think he sees the value in just keeping the establishment in place versus going back to to Trump again. Uh, and I think that's why he's going to stay in the race the whole way through. I kind of think he's there to siphon votes off. You know? Exactly. He's going to get like 3% of the vote and that'll be it. I think he's going to take some of the, I think, I, and I think he's hoping that he takes more for, of Trump votes than anything else. And, and I think that's what he's going to do to see it the whole way through. So that's the Supreme Court. Hey? Um, Eclipse. So, solar Eclipse. Yes, sir. Did you see now, it? No, I was inside. I didn't Did have really glasses. No, I didn't have glasses. So I didn't view it. I saw, you know, I saw online, everybody taking pictures and with the glasses and everything. But we, I didn't go outside, didn't look at it. Um, we, you know, we had the windows open. We saw it get dark out and whatever, but we didn't look at because we didn't have the glasses and we didn't want to, you know, like, would you say, uh, uh, raw dog, <laughs> raw dog, and bear back, <laughs> bear back. <laughs> we didn't want to do that, so um, yeah. So we didn't see. Him. I'm surprised. You know, do you feel left out? Do you feel like you missed the big moment, or you don't give a shit? I saw it in 2017. This next time, I'll see it in 2040, whatever the hell it was, 2044. I'll see it then. It's an eclipse. I, I, I know it's a huge thing, and it's a big. It's a total eclipse, and it's solar eclipse. But I, I. I'm fine with with missing and I've seen I saw all the pictures and the and the videos and everybody taken there's a million of them on online I'm good with that there's a lot of photographs online though isn't there there is so that's I I um I gotta tell you I oh here's the other thing I don't think anybody really knows when the next one because I've heard five different people say five different things to me on when the next eclipse is happening because depending on what type of eclipse it is it's that's different. the thing there's eclipses all the time but if you're talking total solar eclipse i think that it was like 2044 or something that's what i like heard the too. same thing as today same thing as today yeah yeah and then somebody told me like 50 some odd years and i'm like oh now i don't know what's happening and i don't think anybody else does well what sources what, what do you you know what are they going off of Oh, just some people. I don't know. Um, well, look at this award-winning photograph. Come on. Look at that. That's beautiful. Isn't it? Very nice. I took the glasses and put it over the phone, snapped a quick shot of it. Boom. There you go. Be see, now that you didn't even get... It wasn't even completely eclipsy. No, it wasn't. It was almost Sp there, though. Spoiler alert. It doesn't. It wasn't good here from New York. We didn't have the proper anglage. Right. A little more west and we would have yeah right? it would have it worked out really good we got at a different angle so it wasn't total from our angle yeah so i looked this morning out this morning i go i just peaked up just to kind of i was i don't know why it just i was like it was like 11 o'clock and i was like i just want to see what's going on up there and i looked up and i didn't realize how powerful that sun is <laughs> I, guess. I see the sun every day of my entire life but i don't really realize it's a thing yeah, like, like I look at it. You look at you know, like I looked at it for a second. I was like, "Oh my god, it really, that must be true." The whole retina. I don't think you. I don't believe that you can burn your retinas. I. I mean, you've got to be a really big idiot 
to fight through the I looked for a second and a half way before the eclipse even started and I'm and I was like I don't know how anybody can keep their eyes on that. Yeah, I don't know if people are if you're keeping your eyes on it something yeah, something's weird. But I think the point is when it's an eclipse it's more concentrated and focused almost laser it's not a laser but almost laser more towards the laser like Regular lasers or outer space Jewish lasers? What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm... Regular okay. lasers. <laughs> Regular lasers. Okay. It's just a little more focused. The light coming off of the, uh, was it the the Arona, what, what, Aurora? What was the outside? The Corona. I don't know what <laughs> you see the Corona of the sun, right? And the, the it's a little more focused on the on the outside of the moon. Yeah. So it's a little brighter, and it and it kind of. You look right at it. It'll, it's going to be a little more intense than a regular well, sunny day. Let me tell you what I kept doing, which was a mistake. Like an idiot, I didn't put the glasses on because I was sharing a pair. Oh, wait. I, I thought I brought up a I did bring up glasses, but my stupid fucking kid moves. We had great glasses, too. They were like fairy glasses. They had like fairy wings on the top. They were really <laughs> mad. <laughs> No, nah, that's shit. You can't have fucking kids, Frank. You can't. You figured it out. I fucked up. Anyway, that's. I forgot. I was going to start the show with that. I put the glasses right here to wear the glasses and do total eclipse of the heart at the beginning. I fucked the whole thing up. Okay. Anyway, way to go. Um, I kept sh- so we we're sharing, and I, <laughs> I kept doing this. I would put the glasses over my eyes and look up. And then and I would then take go. the glasses. <laughs> I would still be looking up and I would get like a little every it's, fucking I did it four times before I realized what I was doing. And how did that feel? Like I, I like I was a fucking idiot. And that's how it yeah. felt. <laughs> that's how I felt. I did do a Trump. Yeah. By the way, did you see that um Biden trolled Trump about Oh yeah, he trolls him all the time. You follow his the president's Twitter, like yeah. the official there was a, a couple of weeks ago or last week, whatever, Trump was on Truth Social or something bragging about a he won his own tournament, like the Trump golf tournament, whatever. Oh, right, so right, did, right. It was a huge paragraph. And, and Joe Biden, oh, congratulations, uh, Mr. Trump. That's a what, a, what a a great award. And you should be very proud of yourself. Like he was just congratulating on a victory that he won his own tournament. Now, yeah. how do you feel about this? Because I and I, I also saw Trump put the. Janine shared this with us. Trump put an eclipse where his head eclipsed the sun that he put out on his own truth social. Mm -hmm. I like a good barb exchange. I do. And I think during an election, you get that stuff and it's totally fair. Call me old fashioned, though, in an Internet where we have plenty of that stuff every day from lesser people. I kind of want the presidency to be above those little shitty barbs where was this uh high bar in 2016 but between that's all he was when he was on twitter all it was was shitty barbs well i'll tell you why i could i have a little leeway for that he was the underdog and the outsider so you come in scrap uh, he's rocky he comes in scrap and he's the street fighter guy not really the, the technical boxer he's, i can understand that sort of thing no, I can't. No, no I mean when he was in, when he was in the office. He oh was yeah, the, yeah. Even then. Yeah, even then, I, and I'd laugh at it and everything, and I could enjoy some little things, and you know, Kofifi, we all laughed over and all that kind of stuff. And when he would take shots at people, some sometimes, um, sometimes I I thought it was terribly mean, like uh, the bleeding oh, one, and of, he made fun of uh, a handicap reporter, the, yeah, the Gold Star family. When he eggs on the, <laughs> the, these loaded up. the the dictators, when he fucking yeah. eggs them on to oh, get, try it, you know, it's like stop, just fucking stop. But let's go back. Let's forget him for a moment. Let's go back to the office. Keep bringing him up. I'm not bringing him. Up. I'm, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I I, I want to go back to the office. Everybody, I, the internet to me is a as a land of jokes. Like that's what it's for. I don't want anybody to take the internet too seriously. With the exception of maybe the the president of a country, the leader of a country. And listen, you can have fun every now and then. And I don't mind the occasional joke. I think it's fine. But I would love it if that office got returned to a place of dignity where it's like, we're not going to take a shot at somebody here. And 
my question is, is can, can that even exist? Like is even the office of president not immune from engagement and reach on social where you're just trying to get as much as possible because the presidents face the same issues that podcasts face, which is I have a lot of followers, but if I want to reach everybody, I've got to be a little controversial, sensational, you know, all that kind of shit. What's your question? Is is can the off, can the office of president be above internet? I think, I think it can be. I think, and again, I'm gonna just. I think we're in a situation right now where we have one person vying for the presidency who is who acts like a five year old. And so if you think two, it's just him? It doesn't have anything to do. I with... think it's a. I, I don't know. I think there's some element of it's the internet, and I get that. But I think most of it, the vitriol and the attacks and the I don't care who I'm talking about. Come, I mean, if it were just any other candidate, they they and they started attacking people randomly just like oh this guy's is an asshole you're or whatever they are saying it wouldn't fly you know it just doesn't it's it's weird it just doesn't go that way i, I don't understand um so like obama's on on the internet and he doesn't attack people he doesn't you know um no but if you remember the beer summit he fucked up i forget what it was I forget what happened. Somebody got arrested or I forget what it was. Remember he had the beer summit at the White House. That was the first instinct inkling of the president's up here. Don't be down here. You can't be mixing it up with people having it. Like, I don't even want the president commenting on everything. We don't need the president's opinion on everything, you know, well, on on only on the new, you know, things that matter, global events even local stuff you know when tragedies happen or well, like a, like when obama called uh, kanye a jackass all right that Kanye's was off a jackass. that was off my that was a hot mic i think it's supposed too. To be, that wasn't it was like a, an official thing a, agreed agreed but i'm just saying those are one of those moments where it's like be, he is a jackass be, and he is a jackass he's a, and and turns out he was more right than we had originally thought yes you know but uh be above it i just want i want the president uh, the office to be dignified and to be above it all a little bit i wasn't Wouldn't expecting that, nice? that with trump at all because that's not his style but uh traditionally i'd like it to be there anyway yeah it was until... i think it's an interesting question of can the can the can the office can the presidency survive just the way the internet is, which is like a knockdown, drag out. I think you know. it can. I think it can. I, but I think um, once one party gets, you know, their act together and gets a, a grown up as a fucking candidate, then you have two grown ups, intelligent people that can debate like human beings. Then, then you'd have, then you could get back to that. You're coming out swinging. Uh, Jay I'm Sabs. just being truthful. That's all. Jay Sabs is here with us, which is great because we're about to hey. talk about her, her great, the great portrayal is what I'm calling it, Frank. I don't know what this is. Do I know what this is? And what did I just walk into? You oh, betrayed you, us for some reason. You walked it. You are like Pesci walking into the room to get made just now. Mm -mm. Uh, no, two things to, qu to quickly finish up the eclipse. Um, a woman in New York City claims that she's got irreversible eye damage from looking at the eclipse in 2017 for only mm -hmm. 10 seconds. She looked at it with no glasses for 10 seconds? She barebacked it, raw dogged it, 10 wow. seconds. That's a long time to look at it. And says that she has irreversible eye damage. I have to be honest, I don't believe her. Yeah. Um, right. And there is a death toll of one because a doctor from long island had the old airstream trailer on the back of her pickup truck was driving out to go see the perfect spot for the eclipse for some crazy reason she wound up in the in the airstream trailer while the thing was on the move door flies open she pops out dead what's an airstream Ooh. trailer <clears throat> you know the big silver trailers like the old school looking silver. oh they look like big silver twinkies yeah yeah exactly 
Gotcha. Exactly. Well-respected pediatrician from Stony Brook, right? That's, that's actually my hospital, believe it or not. Um, that's where I will be one day where somebody will be saving me from a heart attack, most likely. That's nice. That's <laughs> it's in Stony Brook. So Lord. I got to be nice to them. So wait, so this I woman was- I won't say was... a bad thing about Stony Brook Hospital, Frank. Don't no. try and get me to. It won't happen. I'm not going to do that. Why if I have I a chance that? of living, that's those are the people that are going to be bringing me back. Go that's ahead. them. So she was in. So the trailer was being towed or pulled to a, a location, and she was in the trailer. Yeah, she was in the trailer as it was getting driven somewhere, mm-hmm. and then the door popped out open, and she she fell out. She flew out. That's that's terrible. That's it's terrible. terrible. It's terrible. It is technically due to the eclipse, though. So put it, chalk it up there. One one of the death toll. Also, there was a plane that was flying back from seeing the a tiny plane was flying back from seeing the uh eclipse from arkansas two minutes into its return flight boop, went right down crashed Ooh, uh, how many a lot of people or four people on board um i believe everybody wound up being okay oh wow they all survived injured taken airlifted to the hospital for treatment but as of right now all survived man that's great imagine surviving a plane crash that's on oh, Eclipse Day. On Eclipse Day. That's that's with that's the good. cicadas just time. around the corner after the northeast earthquake. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot going on. We'll, we'll get through that too. Yeah. 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 So where there was one bug, now there's gonna be two. That'll but be I'll fun. tell you what, the the craziness and the hysteria that I saw today, it really warranted those signs on the highway that was like, take mass transit, don't be driving. Because so you was, were driving? I, no, I was out around two o'clock, and I I saw this shit out the. <laughs> I saw that stuff. People Ace Venturing it out the window. Yeah, and then and I'm curious. Say? I saw people just with their stupid hat oh out, God. the fucking <laughs> dry. You know, I don't know if that's just Long Island animals or not, but I'm curious, Jace, to get your input on this because, you know, my wife works in the school where my daughter goes, and I get a call from her and she goes hey, half the school ain't here and she's like and the other yeah. half is leaving in the middle of the day because all these people are throwing like eclipse parties at their houses so well, it was like crazy I don't know if they were throwing eclipse parties as people got you know again scared I guess I don't know if they thought like something was going to happen it's unbelievable there wasn't um we had more we had more than usual people out more than what it usually is but then also i want to say over a hundred kids got picked up early a lot of kids got picked up early too. yeah Which because, to me because, is like because people don't want to be I, was that because i feel like that's because people because the eclipse kind of happened when kids usually get picked up right around this yeah no. well, every well, school no, every school is different, yeah. Every school, right. every school district is different. So, okay, so maybe it was also, a traveling thing. People don't want to be on the roads with their kids when everybody's driving like maniacs. That's what I thought it was. But people get, you know, people leaving school early or whatever it is. I nobody was driving like a man a maniac when I left work, and that was at two forty five. So Honestly, you were right in kind of the. Uh... Well, was as right. begin- it was well. It Beginning. happened around three, three thirty ish, right? Three thirty. Well, no, it started. Here. It started at two fifteen. Right. Oh, okay. And then, uh, it stopped or started to get um, go back the other way. Yeah, or- at three thirty. But um, yeah, there was a lot of kids picked up, which was like, hey, I've taken, uh, I've you know. We've all called in sick for just because you don't want to. Every now and then, the kids get to do the same thing. Dude, I never had I never had off. a free sick day ever in my life, ever. What do you mean? Every time I took a sick day, I was either really sick. One time that I was just, I didn't feel good in the morning, and then I started to kind of feel bad. Like I was like, con- kind of like I get now. Like you get, you know, when you get your allergies and you're just, you wake up all fucked up and everything in here hurts. Sure. And then you, you start to blow your nose and everything, and then you start to feel like a normal person again. That happened to me one time. It's like around 11 o'clock. Like I was a, I'll never forget this. I was a kid, 
like 11 o'clock, I started feeling better. And my mother was like, I'll never let you take a sick day ever again. She's like, I, I'm thinking about driving you to school right now. And I was like, oh my God, don't do well, I think that's because you're you're a miserable bastard when you're, when you're sick, probably. <laughs> no, but my mom was like, you're not really sick. And I'm like, no, I didn't feel good this morning. Like, I really didn't feel good in the morning. And uh, I just remember her being pissed. Like, she did not play. She, I never, like, you know, kid, like, right now we're trying to plan a trip. And, and I'm like, I'm going to take the kids out of school. I don't give a fuck. Like, who cares if they miss five days of bullshit? Yeah, my they're mother, not going to get their dream job because of those five days that they missed back in fucking third grade or whatever. The that hell. was my mom. She <laughs> was like, you do not miss. Like, we never took off from school to go on a trip ever. And look how yeah, good you here. turned out. <laughs> Same with you, Jay Zabs. Well, we never took any trips, but <laughs> <if> we, <laughs> um, yeah, no, we wouldn't. No, I, I don't think I ever like. I'm not sure if I ever got taken out of school for like a trip or anything. But if I was sick, you know, yeah, stay home. You know, I, I but I wouldn't abuse that. You know, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm sick. You know, right. I would if I was genuinely sick when I was a kid. But if I was genuinely sick, I would. Hey, I'm sick. And, All right, stay home. But I wouldn't be like, ah, I just don't feel like it today. Your mom was a lot more calm than my mom was. I feel like your mom was a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Sensible? <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, my mom was a maniac. She was just like, you're fucking going to school. <laughs> I just think she didn't want to deal with you. And I, and I can't blame her. Yeah, now looking back on it, you're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what? Let the, let the school have them for today. I really don't want to have to deal with this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, now, Janine, did you see the uh, eclipse? Because Frank skipped it. First of all, why no one asked? We didn't discuss where it was for the earthquake. That's fucking number one. Okay, that's I old felt, news. You I weren't on the show little, when we talked about it. I know, but I felt a little betrayed that either of you didn't say, "Janine, are you okay?" Or Janine, <laughs> where were you? Or Janine, did you feel that? <laughs> Well, I, think- I no, first of all, I was the first one in our group text and our friends that said anybody else feel that earthquake it, like five minutes after it happened. I was the only I was the first minutes, one, though. but I was the first one. Nobody else texted first. I, I, I started the group chat off with the earthquake and our and group then, chat is dead anyway. It's not dead. it's it's on life support, but it's not dead. <laughs> um, so actually, no, I'm a little upset that I never, I didn't feel anything on Friday because I was at dance class and we all were dancing and the music was loud and nobody in the class felt anything. So, and then at 6 p.m. I was in the car driving, so I didn't even feel that aftershock. Not oh, yeah. fair. They say in cars, I I don't know, but they say in cars, you don't feel it because yep. the car absorbs the shock or whatever. And also well, in 2011, the smaller ones. yeah. 2011 did not feel that as well because I was out getting lunch and you're too busy stealing salads. Yeah, right now. I really, I did not even. So that's, that's upsetting too. So now I, just, I did someone yell out everybody Romaine calm. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. That's I just want to say, I let you have that one. That was such an easy slam dunk. I could have jumped in there, and I didn't. I kept quiet. Thank you. Appreciate it. I gave it. you that tenth of a second to, to slide in there and have that well, one. Well, I think it was all worth it because, come on. I think yeah. half the chat was ch- <laughs> started to type that before you said it. <laughs> They're like, oh, fuck it. He got to it. Delete, delete, delete. Damn right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm okay. I survived the earthquake of 2020. All right. Did anyway, you eclipse. Eclipse. Frank, you didn't look at it. How come? I didn't have the glasses. Uh, oh, I didn't, okay. I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I see all the videos and stuff online. I, I didn't want to go outside and be like, you know. So we just skipped it. And I'm surprised that you didn't even take the phone and try and like see it through the phone. You're not supposed to do that too, right? Oh, we're not, I did it for a second. I, I checked it's it out. It's the same thing because you're just looking through the lens. It's not a. You're looking right at it. Yeah, but it doesn't, doesn't have the, the brightness or the power. I don't know. Um, yeah. I did look at it because I did get glasses from school. So, Oh, cool. Um, and the kids looked at it, and they were amazed by it. And, yeah. My kids, too. I was surprised at how into it they were. 
Do they all? This is a question for all for both of you. Do the kids all realize? I mean, they know what's going on, right? They know that the moon is passing in front of the sun. You explain the whole thing to them. Um, just, you hey, look at the eclipse. It, they probably don't get it. They don't really. Okay. No, actually, I'm sure um, Anthony. Someone was like, "Cool, Dad. Now show me some tits on on Google." Jeez. <laughs> He's seven. <laughs> He's eight, first of all. He's eight. There you go. <laughs> and she, Janine was saying that to me during the big betrayal, is what I'm calling it. What is this betrayal? I, I feel I've gotten, I was betrayed, and I'm not even sure how you were. How I was betrayed. I'm going to tell you how. Okay. I'm going to tell you how. Is this the thing that you posted to the, uh, yeah, to the uh, members only? Oh, yeah. Okay, now I it's got in, it. It's in the members. So the members are in the know for the better part of two or three Ooh. days now. But I go, I told the story about how my, my son broed me. He's like, bro, we're going to go to, we're going to go to fucking Dave and Buster's and hang out. And I was like, get away. And then sure enough, two weeks later, I said to my wife, I go, let's take the kids to Dave and Buster's just cause. I don't know if I'm going through a midlife crisis, Frank, or uh, I don't know what's happening. But I was just like, I was hell bent on, I want to create a memory for the kids that we went to this place that we only go to when it's like a fundraiser or a birthday party. And we went just because, you know, just because it was like, uh, you know. And on top of the fact that my son won the deck hockey championship. Thank you. I believe I showed hey. you all any of those. Um, besides that, and like, you know, CC's kind of crushing it in school a little. So I was like, let's just take them. Let's just go and have fun. So we were supposed to go early in the morning and then nails needed to get done. And, and all, we just, all this life stuff got in the way. So we get in the car like later in the day. What we, needed to get done? Uh, my wife had to go get her oh, nails, nails done. Okay. Yeah, she took CC because Sunday was the father daughter dance, which is also Aww. something we can discuss. Um, anyway, because I kind of, I, I swear, I kind of thought about ending the podcast on Sunday after the father daughter dance, but that's another, it's another topic. Oh god. So anyway, so we go to Dave and Buster's. We walk in. We're there for two seconds, and like the moon covering the sun, this <laughs> blonde comes into my orbit. And a, you know, like a slow mo car accident happens. Like Janine comes walking in front of me, and I look at her, and, and I, everything is in slow mo. And I'm like, "This shouldn't be happening." It was like a weird multiverse <laughs> moment. <You know? laughs> like, I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" I'm like, "It right away," because I'm a good person and I think good thoughts about people. I just assume one of her kids had a birthday party there, right? No birthday party. Oh no! So, so was this it uh, before? I mean, was this just her taking her kids and having fun like you're like you were doing? Partially, right. partially. Well, well, well. It's not entirely true. She was there socializing with other friends. <gasps> That's all right. We we didn't want to go. Yeah, uh -huh. you don't know no. these people. You've never met them before. Are now. they vacation friends? No. Uh, now. Surprisingly. I am when I tell you, and this is how I could tell there's a level of guilt here. I am 15 minutes away from this Dave and Buster's. You, you are not. You are half an hour away from this place. This is what she keeps telling me. I go, you, now hold, hold on. Hold on a minute. I'm going to put, I put your address in to make sure. <laughs> Frank, I made it there in 15 minutes on Saturday. You're lying. You well, that are doesn't lying. mean you're there's 15 no minutes way. away. You drive like an old man like Frank, so you definitely don't. I don't drive like an old man. These are wild accusations being thrown around okay. right now. Hold on. And I'm a much better driver than Frank. Bull. Everybody knows that. Bull um, duties. So I go, you you come out. First of all, and let, or Frank, this is indisputable. I am the farthest east member of our crew. Yes. On Agreed. Long Island, for people who aren't in this area. So when anybody ventures out past the other farthest east person, the, the next farthest east person, I feel like I need a phone call. I need a text message. I need a, hey, I'm going to be in your area. You want to come hang out? Nothing. What? Nothing. It's not even your area, though. I had bullshit. 
I had to run into her there. Oh and my! I'll hold on. Now, I'm gonna show Frank because he's. And I'm gonna put this out to everybody. Have you ever caught your partner cheating in the <laughs> act? I've not. I mean, that's mm -hmm. never happened to me. I would imagine it feels a lot like this. Because a I lot like this. Yeah, I didn't know what to do or what Did to. Did she say. introduce you to these others? They were there. They were like right there when it ha like I ran into them, and then mm -hmm. her roommate came over. And then the others were like right there and they were looking at me like, who are you? And I'm like, who are you? The winter, the winter me, the summer me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I've been here. Like, who are you people? <laughs> and this is what's, this is where you're going to be heartbroken. I mean, really. I can't wait. The guy that she was with. Yeah. Spitting image of you. Looked oh, exactly like you. That is, he did not look like and she you. goes to me, she goes, I'm thinking about. If, if Frank ever goes down, we got a replacement right here. And hey, nobody's going to notice the difference. That's some horse crap. I can't imagine he's he's this good looking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a replacement for me, do you? No. Remember that episode? <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, the guy was like just tall and skinny, but I'm like this. I, I In my head, I go, she's trying to replace Frank with this piece of shit right here. This fucking guy, like she's going to slide him right in like there's nothing. nothing was he as do. charming and friendly and funny as me? No, I got to tell yeah, you, you I had a real problem with him. Oh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll I don't know fine. what kind of jacket he was wearing, Janine, but I, it annoyed me. I didn't care for it. Oh, my. I hope he's not listening. Some towing thing or plumbing thing or I don't know what it was. It was driving me crazy. Because that was the hard part. Because then I go, oh, are you guys like, did you guys just get here? And she's like, no, we've been here for like four hours. And I was like, so you're leaving. Because like, cause now I don't want to be running <laughs> Yeah, do you have to her. like hang out to, with, with them and everything? Yeah, because that was the thing. It was like we were there to be with the kids. And like I even said to my wife, I was like, it'll be like a little cute. Like me and you, we'll, we'll, we'll go off and play skee ball by ourselves where the kids we'll are We'll go playing. off in the corner. You could give me a hand job. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Whatever I said, I don't remember. I said nice things. Give the old Dave and Buster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was like, it was really going to be like a family time. I didn't want to like, you know. Family that. time. Meanwhile, they're both chugging um, beers and alcohol. Like he had straight, I think it was whiskey, this guy on top of you right now. Look at that. Janine is sending me screenshots of the directions. I saw it. It's closer to a half an hour. I have to I have to agree is, with Janine here. Okay, this Thank is total you. bullshit. I, they, first of all, everybody knows that these directions are padded by like 10 minutes. I mean, uh, that, that's not true. There is no way that this is only 15. That is, I'm sorry, I don't believe you. I'm telling you, it's 15 minutes. It's um, down the LIE. It's a straight it's shot. It's not 15 minutes. It's not 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes from my house, not 15 minutes from your that's house. She, go, well, she goes, I'm closer to this than you are. I'm like, the fuck you are? Yes, I am. <laughs> I go, I have a rewards account here, okay? I got a house account here. Can they I know be my name. You? And I said this in a text or even said it to your face. I don't remember. I would think that you would go to the one that's closer to you. There is no one closer to me. Um, In the other mall? Or did they shut that one down? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but there's no <laughs> Dave and Buster's. <laughs> the fuck you're talking oh, you're okay. talking about the air place? No, I'm talking Urban about air? I'm talking about Dave and Buster's. Didn't no. there what didn't there used to be one that was at that mall that's closer to you? No. Are you maybe. sure? I don't know, maybe. I've only ever gone to this one. I've never gone to Pretty another. Are you sure Dave there was one that was closer to you? Lies. Just out. Google it. Utter. Lies. But even that place is not that close to you. But so who is this other? Who's this other couple now? Um, dude, it was so awkward. And there was like, here's Jake and Shelly, and I'm like, mm, hi, um, Jake and Shelly. My daughter and her her daughter went to pre K together, and we stayed friends with them. So how's their podcast? <laughs> Actually, you know what's really funny? Can I tell you something though? Can I tell you something? <laughs> the the daughter, their daughter, looked like a real bitch. <laughs> I hope that he's not listening. I told him to listen to this. She looks like a very sweet girl. Everybody calm down. I'm just joking. Um. So do they have a podcast? No. Definitely not. <clears throat> All right. Um. I mean, I, I didn't get an invitation to either of these outings, but 
Yeah, well, well I could justify in mind this? because I wasn't gathering with anybody. We were doing a family out. I get that. I understand. Okay. You know? Okay, well, I cannot wait to... I have to say, I haven't visited this one before. I've only gone to one that's uh, a, a different one. And this one, by far, was the nicest one. Nicer well, that's one. That's shocking because it's really not that great. I know. <laughs> It's nicer than the other ones. So, but and I'll tell you what, Frank. We did. We had a. I had a beer. Uh, the wife had a margarita. Mm-hmm. We had our cocktails. We were walking around. We were playing. It was like a nice little. How long beautiful... were you there for? Like, what time did you leave there? I don't know what time we left, but the point is, is that Janine was still there for another like hour and a half. <laughs> And, yeah, and spending five and a half hours at Dave and Buster. And it's not a huge place. Like, you really do. So I'm, like, just constantly running into her and shit until finally I decide I'm going to take out my phone and film her and expose her <laughs> for the cheating piece of shit that she is. And uh, and I did. And that's what's in the members only area. It's messed up, man. It's really oh. fucked up. It's really fucked up. You tell you tell somebody. Hey, I'm gonna be in your in your. Hey, I go. I on occasion. Hey, I'm gonna be about thirty minutes from you. you Want to meet up? Yeah, I on occasion have to. How go. How far away did this other couple live? They live right near me. So half hour away. Yeah. It's fucked up. No, half an hour from from Anthony. Fifteen Wait, minutes from the place. Then I go to find out. And I, I, I really mean this. I have a particular, I mean, I mean this as much as I can without having real feelings. I live near the, the vineyards, like like the Hamptons vineyards, like where all the wineries in the North Fork and everything. It's kind of a big thing. A lot of people come out here all the time. I go to find out that Janine's brother hit the vineyards on, I think, Sunday, maybe. Yep. No, no phone call. No text. No, he didn't, he didn't actually go to a vineyard. He went to a brewery. Either way. Oh, because I hate those places. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have to say, if someone was in my neighborhood, one of you guys was in my neighborhood, like at a restaurant or something, and I didn't get a, you know, hey, we're, we're yeah, around. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's a little weird. At the very least, you have to shoot a text, be like, hey, I'm in the area. Hey, I'm about a half an hour from you. You want to hang out? Yeah. Yes. On a Saturday? On a Saturday. No matter what I do in my neighborhood, I think I'm a half hour from Janine anyway. So if I go to a restaurant in my own neighborhood, I got to tell Janine. Yes. Right. Well, what are you doing? (laughs) I don't know. Me and Aaron go to a restaurant on a Saturday. We have to tell Janine. Like if we're in our own neighborhood. Again, if it's just a half hour from Janine. Okay. Here's here's the thing. This this is a little tricky. I'm gonna I'm gonna rule on this. If you're determined to have a night out with just the two of you. It's understandable. It's okay. You're you're right. allowed to to go out with your wife without having to invite anybody else. Wait, wait, no, I have to say, wait, hold on a minute. It's different rules for Frank because he doesn't have kids, so he gets them more often than us. But here's what I'm saying: like if he if he frequents that restaurant without telling you, then it's fucked up. If you just go once because you're it's you in my own neighborhood, it's two three blocks from me. I have to tell everybody within a half hour no, radius no, 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 that I'm no, going. No, 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 not in your own neighborhood. <laughs> if you're going if you're going like if you're an exit or two away from her again, if you're going an exit or two away from her and it's like, honey, we're gonna, you know, we have to have a day, you know, things have been crazy. We gotta have a date night, just me and you. We're gonna talk, you know, not your parents, not my parents, just us. Uh, so you have every right to do that but if you go to that like restaurant every like saturday night you know and you go like three times in a, like a two-month time period no i'm not talking about times. near near janine i'm talking about my own neighborhood it's three four, you know half a mile from me no no, 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 no. all right no but half- technically i'm less than a half an hour from janine yeah but it's that's different you're 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 playing i'm just trying there. to understand the rules here <laughs> Let's I'm say a- I go to a restaurant with See here's here's the thing. Janine went with this other couple. But if she was going with this other couple and she invited you and said we're going with this other couple, you would say no. Oh, 100%. Exactly. I would not want to be a part of it. Exactly. All. So it's like well, why that's just cuz 
it's an awkward thing to begin with. It's like I'm going to introduce but this group of friends to this group of friends. It's good. They don't it's want you super know. Awkward Here's as it thing. was. This is why you send the text because of what happened. You go, oh, I'm going with this couple of Dave and Buster's. Because then I could have been like, get the fuck out of here. We were planning on going to Dave and Buster's. Then I would have went somewhere else. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So wow, you just wanted really? the opportunity to be a bigger scumbag. <laughs> No, no, but I feel like you gotta. I would have, if she would have, like, you know, if she's like, oh, there's another couple there. If we felt like going, we would have went if there was a genuine invitation. But if not, we would have been like, oh, we'll give Janine the time. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take our time or we'll take the kids to another similar place, you know? I don't know. I see, I see Janine's side here. I'm you're shocked going with another, if you're going with another couple, she whispered and, to me, she goes, I think this guy could replace Frank and we don't skip a beat. And I can't believe you're taking her side. Oh, and if that's the case, you know, let's, let's hope we never cross paths with this guy. I'm curious as to why Erin has joined us. She has, she must have something to say here. I'm very intrigued. No, I'm sorry. It was a fake out. I thought that you were wrapping this up and I was next. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm very <laughs> hurt. We've got a long way to go here, Erin. A long oh, way? What are we oh, doing? No, no, no. That's really, that's really all of it. I, I can, I'm shocked, Frank, that you're kind of taking her side. I, I feel well, like. A phone call, a text should have been as one. I know, but if you're going out with a group, sorry, no, go ahead. No, I just feel like it's a no win. It's like if we tell you we're going with another couple, you're going to be like, okay, I'm not going. But then we right. show up, and you're like, why didn't you invite me? And it's it's like this is a little catch twenty two ish. Uh huh. Mm. Now, if I'm going to a place, yeah. if I'm <laughs> if I'm going to a place right by Janine's house. I'm tell. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna let her know. I'm in the uh, same thing as if I even if you're going with another not, couple, she's never met. The whole thing. I was not near your house at all. And and it's this practically is a, next door. If I'm gonna be oh, honest with <laughs> it's they share a property line, right? Yeah. Um, when I had to get a fence put up, I had to get the I had to get David, David Buster's Buster approval. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a ski ball once landed in your yard. <laughs> No, but if I, I'll, but even if, even, okay, even if I'm going with, if, say I'm going to a restaurant by Frank's house and I'm going with somebody else or a family member or whatever, I'm going to be like, even if I don't invite him, I'm going to be like, hey, you know where I'm going on Saturday is to blah, blah, blah. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I got to go do this. You know, I'm, I'm meeting a cousin or whatever. I'm meeting friends. Can I be with. honest? Yeah. Can I be honest? But here's where she tells me she almost did it. We no, there's no, there's no shock because you live a half an hour away from there. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, we we knew we were gonna hang out, but we didn't know where. And then we find she finally decided this place. So it was kind of like a last minute, like oh, throwing okay. the friend under the bus. <laughs> right? No, no, it's n nothing bad. We couldn't just we just couldn't make a, a decision. So oh, so it was her <laughs> choice to go there. Yep. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna mm. put to Frank. Frank, we have those restaurants we go to all the time. If we went there, and either of these two guys with, was there with other people, would you be offended? Think about the uh, restaurants. Great, all the time. great question, Aaron. If they great were in, question. if they were literally in our neighborhood, like in our town, yes, I'd be like, oh, okay. I, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I'd a, I'd wonder what you're doing here. I'm like, oh, what's you know what brought you here? Here's the thing, though. If you're with another couple that I don't know, I understand. But if yeah. you're with a couple that we do know, that's I'd different. be like, all right, that's messed oh, that's up. That's very different. That's bigger problems. Oh my right. god! But if you're with a couple that we don't know, town, sitting at our restaurant and you know hanging out together without us, that's one thing. But honestly, if 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 Aunt and and Cuddles were with another couple in one of our restaurants, I would be like, oh my god, you know about this restaurant? Now we can take them here. Like, yay! I wouldn't be like, pull up yeah, no. more chairs. We are sitting that, here too. We're going to make that, it uncomfortable until everyone wants to die. That's what that's my, that's my point. That's what I'm saying. If you're with another couple that we don't know, I get it. Because we're there by different... ourselves, just just D and I by ourselves. Wouldn't, wouldn't you be a little like? No, because then I I would assume it's like a date night. You just wanted the two of you to be to be you know at a nice restaurant on your own. I, I understand. Hmm. People have well, dinner we're with just. The... We're going to dine on your lawn. <laughs> picnic on aunt's lawn we're not going to invite you well uh, but listen like i i've i've kind of let go of the vineyard thing because i know a lot of people come out and go to the vineyards and they go back and then there's there's things done and there's no so i get that that's going to happen but i feel like it happens a lot and I told you to live by the vineyards 
I'm just saying a little text. Hey, I'm going to be out in the area, you know? Hey, if you're not doing anything, swing by. Maybe they just don't want to see you. I'm starting to think a lot of people don't want to have anything to do with me. It's what it comes down to. It could just be as simple as that. I don't know why we're we're dancing around that. I used to be very well liked. Do do you remember? No. I didn't know you then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ant needs therapy, says Diane. DJ Shenanigans. Ant is expecting a knock on the door to be asked if he's coming out to play. Yeah, maybe a little, I guess. All right. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I am well I'm not exactly sure where we're going but I will be on the east end on Saturday okay that, see now I know you feel bad about what you did last week what, what's oh, uh, you're not invited yeah, boom just blew up at look at his face look how I'm going <laughs> I'm going with my other friends ah. and we are going on a bus to the vineyards. Um, slash maybe brewery. Not really sure. So we will be out there that way. But um, And you are not. You are specifically not invited. Yeah, you're specifically not invited. What's crazy is I'm like best friends with like half the breweries out here. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like nuts. I could hook everybody up. Nothing. Can't even get the, the love and respect. Here's the that thing. Way. You, you would not go. If I said it. Listen, hey, it's nice to be asked. Okay. Classy. It is is nice to to be asked. asked. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Every single time. But if, again, if you're with a couple that someone that that you don't, that that we don't know, I would understand. Like, all right, you want to just be, you want to get to know this couple or whatever. Or you're just. I hate getting to know couples. Can I be honest with you? That's that's why you don't get invited anywhere. (laughs) He has no interest. Couple dating is the worst. I don't. F- I, it's okay. I went to the daddy daughter dance on Sunday. Okay. Poor Erin. She's probably going to fall asleep. As I'm I. sorry. Go ahead. No, but she's going to be entertained. She's going to be entertained. It does seem like you do a lot of father daughter dances, though. Am I crazy? It's like once a month with you. It's once a year. Can I tell you something? It's too much. If, if we're going to be totally honest, you're right. I, I feel like you just went to my me. life. <laughs> Yeah, well, right. we did family bowling. I don't know if that was confusing or not, because that was uh, anyway. It doesn't matter. The last year was the last time I went to a daddy daughter dance. All right. Anyway, I go and it's a room filled with men and their daughters, mm-hmm. and none none of them is interested in being there. Yep. And it immediately makes me, first of all, I'm on the first level not interested in being there. The fact that yep. nobody else is interested in being there makes right. me feel even. Worse about it. Well, do you, it, it probably, I would imagine, it turns into all the kids hang out with each other, and then all the yep. adults hang That's out with it. each other, right? Basically, yeah. But it's a lot of. There's also times where you're just totally by yourself because, right. like, my daughter was running from one room to the other, so I kept like going back and forth, and then after a while, I was just kind of standing in the other room. <laughs> for a little while waiting and then go so there's a little bit of time where you're alone but it's like you talk to people that you've kind of seen and whatever and you're like hey how's it going yeah good and you're like oh good good uh how's uh how's work what do you do again like i i have no i can't hold on to information on these people i have no idea what any of them do i can't remember any of their fucking names so it'd be like if you if i asked you to go to Dave and Buster's and hang out with me and my friend. No, that would be a lovely invitation. Okay. All right. What is one has got to go? What is that? Well, I'm not done with the, you, you done with the father daughter thing. I yeah, have... I have no interest in that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I have no. to tell you, I have to tell you this. Cause I, I, one of the dads, this actually has happened twice, but one of them was bad guy comes over to me and he goes, Hey, he's like, and it was his daughter was playing with my uh, daughter He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, oh, good, good. And I'm like, how you been? Like, I kind of know him. He's like, yeah, good, good. He's like, uh, I saw one of your videos the other day. Popped right up on YouTube. No. I was like, oh, yeah? He's like, yeah. That's it? <laughs> that was it. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, it was great. What are you, an asshole? Mm, just hanging out there. Just hanging out there. Did you throw out a, uh, so what'd you think? Or 
I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. I was like, I was like, okay. And I literally, when it was done, I was like, how, how it was, okay, I'll tell you the other thing. So I'm thinking about this the whole time. Now, another guy came over to me and he goes, one of your videos popped up. And I was like, oh, no shit. He goes, yeah. And he's like, you know, you were talking about this thing. It turns out to be a video from like seven years ago about Dave Matthews Band that I put out there. That oh, God. To this right. day still gets like. It's up there to like in the hundreds of thousands of views. It's it's insane how many views this thing still gets because people are always searching this subject. So he was like, yeah, it was, he's like, it was good. like he was complimentary about it. So that was nice. But the other guy was just like. Yeah, <laughs> and then fucking nothing. Why would you bring that up? Why, why even mention it if you're not going to say anything about it's it? So, so then I go on, and then I'm on Facebook later on in the day. And my Facebook, so there's the show, there's the podcast Facebook, and then I have my own Facebook. But my own Facebook isn't really my own Facebook. Like, I've always used it as the the radio thing. And so most of the people that I'm friends with on there are people who know me from the radio or from this podcast that – Go that right. extra mile to find the, the my personal account, right? So I don't really – I'm telling you, I don't really know 98% of the people that are on my personal Facebook. I just have no idea who they are. <laughs> and I'm scrolling through, and I'm seeing photos from the father-daughter dance. So, like, honestly, like eight guys who were there are friends with me on Facebook. I had no idea. Oh, Lord. Interesting. It's a little unsettling because it's like, okay, but yeah, but if you use it as a your radio thing and and they're just fans or people that listen or whatever, you gotta expect something like that. But you know this, Frank. It's a lot easier to do this, say stupid shit, and have fun and goofy and be silly and say embarrassing shit when nobody's gonna bring it up to you in person at the father daughter dance. You know what I'm saying? Like any mm. one of them could have been like. Boy, that princess thing was a real dick move. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because I'm sh in my mind, I feel like some of them were thinking it, and that's why they didn't. Maybe they didn't like the, the show, and they, they, you know, and they're like, "Hey, if you don't have something nice to say, probably." And they're like, eh, "I don't want to bring it up. What am I going to lie to the guy?" Because I've definitely had the interactions where I I was friends with people, like friends on on social, but also have done things with people, and then unfriended completely unfriended uh, believe it or not a lot of it is because i don't slam trump i believe but um, oh, i'm not friends with you yeah <laughs> but i like people just disappear and then i run into them at things and they're like hey how's it going and i'm like didn't you unfriend me <laughs> like I, this is really <laughs> strange to be having this interaction anyway yeah i wouldn't think too much about it i mean Everybody's awkward in that kind of situation, and no, the friends on Facebook, are, it's not the same as friends in you know. Yeah, but you it interact just, with every day or whatever. I'm be honest with you. For the first time in a long time, I felt uncomfortable. Like I felt like. Oh, I would God. think that's a regular occurrence for you. No, I did. I felt like, how long could I be this guy for who just says silly shit? you know before one of these guys is like what the fuck is wrong with you you know i i don't know it feels a little oh mean, silly, that you mean silly shit i, I don't know it feels a little you know because we could be, can get a little goofy around here that's true we're just having fun but i don't know it made me feel a little awkward all right one has got to go what is this now? i just came to this realization this is an official announcement this is an official announcement channing tatum and john cena we don't need two versions of this. One of them has got to go. There's not enough room on this island. And by island, I mean Earth. They're oh, the same God. person. John Cena. You said I mean, John Cena. I swear to God, I watched Channing Tatum in a commercial and thought, oh, that was the wrestling guy. I have no fucking I. I, it, I almost just came <laughs> to the realization today that these are two different people. Mm. What's it? John Cena was funny in... Ricky Stanicki. Did you see that? That was the funniest he's ever been, and he's still... And that was the in. most recent, I think. Most recent. Thing. It was. But I, don't you feel like if that role went to somebody else, they probably would have Maybe. been better? I don't know. But he was great. I thought he was great in it. Um, and the other With uh, Channing Tatum. I liked him in 21 Jump Street. I'm trying to think of what else. 
here's my other point. None of them are doing memorable performances. Mm. Neither. Of what them. else I liked him in? What else was he in that uh, Channing Tatum that I couldn't think of? I don't know. But uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I would say maybe Channing Tatum. Janine? Gotta go. I said already, John Cena. I wish we could get the two of you on the same page. Just Only one. because John Cena has got the acting, the comedy stuff, and he's also a wrestler. You know, so I think I he's wouldn't want to, horrible. I wouldn't want to disappoint all the wrestlers, the wrestling fans. Out there. All the wrestling fans would be relentless. Right. Aaron? Uh, I would get rid of John Cena. I like Champion. Yeah, I think good. I would want to get rid of either of them, but if you got to, I don't know. Mercury says at least Channing could dance. That's not. Really who is. Okay, see who is in Magic Mike? I think that was. That was Tatum. Okay. I would have gotten that wrong. Hateful. Who was in the Hateful Eight? Christine says John Cena could go. Maybe this is a Republican yeah, everybody, thing. No, no, everybody's going that. Cena. Everybody's saying John Cena. That's weird. Who would you All say, right. Tatum? <clears throat> I said Tatum only because I only really know him from 21 Jump Street, and he was good. John Cena, I liked him in this Ricky Stenicki movie. That was good. He was in another thing. I thought he was good. It's a really flip a coin for me, but I haven't. Se- My point is, I haven't seen Channing Tatum in anything in a while. You know, so I, he's he's kind of been out of sight, out of mind for a while. It's just like you know when you hear actors from the '80s tell the stories about, hey, I was always up against you know Robert Downey yeah. Jr. and we always went up against the same. Part. Like those two are like, uh, you know, yeah. If we energy. can't get if we can't get seen, get get Tatum on the phone. Yeah, who do you think gets offered you. shit first? I bet you Tatum. Probably Tatum. Yeah. All right. Blind top five cuddles is here with us, Aaron. What do we got on this episode? Okay, on this episode we have um, uh. Because of the eclipse and because of the earthquake, what I have is disaster movies, but Ooh. it is not what you think. Okay. It is not, I am not, we are not rating the, um, the virtue and the, and the wonder of these movies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a, a movie, and even if you haven't seen it, I'm going to give you two lines about the situation and if you think you would do well in that, you'd be okay in that, you would prefer that to all the other ones, you put it, oh, uh, I don't even know, higher or lower, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so if, you, so if you take the situation that occurs in the movie yeah, uh-huh. and you think you would triumph in that situation, put it as, at one. If okay. you think you wouldn't do well in that situation, you put it at eight, one to eight? Yes, I'm sorry, there are eight tonight. Okay. I have a I like question. That. Sure, sure. Come Can on. you have um, more situations at eight? Can you have multiple uh, eights? No. Fuck. No. That's it's going to be one through eight. One, each one gets a space. If you'll <laughs> permit me, I'm going to... Was that a diss on this blind top eight? No, no that was a diss on, on Cuddle's survival so skills. It, yeah. was laughing. I thought that maybe that was a... <laughs> also, I'm going to give you... If you permit me, I'm just going to give you a two-sentence or three sentence uh, situation. Um, so there are no questions or at least fewer questions. Great. Like if we haven't seen the movie, you're going to fill us in yeah. on what, what the, the okay. synopsis. Right. I like this. Okay. All right. So here's blind top five. We're doing disaster movies and how well you would fare surviving the particular disaster. Very topical Frankie C given that we've just survived an eclipse, an earthquake, <laughs> and hopefully the cicada invasion. That's I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, and with blind top five, you know how it works. You get the, we get the category, then we get each item and we don't know what item is coming next. So you have to rank before you know what else you have to consider. That's the rub. All right, here we go. Right, Aaron, we're ready for the first one. Okay. The first one is the movie volcano that nobody saw. Um, I it saw came it. out in 1997. Frank saw it. And the situation is you're in LA when a volcano erupts. The streets run with lava, there's fire, there's destruction, but there's also survivors. Are you one of them? Do I get to partner up with Tommy Lee Jones? That's true. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I... <laughs> okay, maybe not. Would I do well if, a vol- if I was living in L.A. and a <laughs> volcano erupted? 
and the streets are flowing with lava. Question is Superman in this multiverse, can he just blow out the lava with his cooling breath? He cannot. <laughs> okay, that's gonna change my ranking then. That would have been in the synopsis. And that's in none of these, just to be clear. <laughs> I got Volcano in at number three. <sighs> I think I do well in that because I want to say so too, but this is I'm worried about getting Aaron early on. Because the people, I mean, there were some, there were problems in that movie that I remember. What is happening? What's... I don't know. I'm muting everybody who's not talking right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is why, is, why am I muted? Because if somebody You're shoveling your body, and I can't, I can't. <laughs> I, I think I would do well in that. It, there were some. It was a, a lava flow thing that was going on in that in that movie, and houses were getting engulfed. Guy. Yeah, houses were getting engulfed in flames. But I think surviving it, I mean, if you could, if you could live with abandoning your house and just moving to another location, yeah, that's that's pretty. I mean, it it would probably it would be traffic jammy and all that stuff, but I think you can get out of that it's, uh, a little more easily than I think most disaster movies. Yeah, mm. I could do that. A lot so, of people right down the middle playing it safe at five, like a yeah. lot. Of I'm going to four. That's crazy to me. Would you put it four? Yeah, I have it. Oh, cuddles at four. I have it at three. Janine, I'm sorry. I didn't know we were rating them. I thought we were just saying if we can survive or not. Oh no, uh, this is no. blind top five, baby. Got a rank. All right, we'll give Janine more time. Uh, <laughs> I one through eight. I the number the movie, but can the I ask a question? One through eight. Yeah, I saw it. Within the first five minutes of the volcano exploding, do they not get in a car and drive away from the lava and end no, the movie? No, because a couple of things. One, it's like in the middle of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and the main characters that we're following are like disaster relief people. Yeah. And like, like the, hospital, the, the children's hospital is right in the path. Oh, shit. Gotta yeah, say so the it's children. Yeah. Yeah. It was, really it, I thought it was good. That's good writing. Yeah. yeah it, it was a good movie. It, was, it wasn't bad. It was uh, Tommy like Lee Jones. I feel like Anne I was in the writer's room just now, Frank, where it's like, why wouldn't they just drive away? Because there's a children's hospital. Shit. Boom. <laughs> gotta, gotta save those children. Got a second act now. Yeah, and then there was a street that was getting engulfed in flames. It was a whole big thing. Was, they got to reroute the lava to go into yeah, the ocean. Yeah, knocked the building down to reroute it. Oh, it was a whole big thing. Uh, Anne Heche was, was in it. Oh, it was yeah. good. Hesh right. or Heche? Question, if you're in a truck, uh, I'm sure this came up in the movie, do you just jump on top of the truck and you're okay? It just melts the bottom of the truck for a little while? No, a lot. Well, in this movie, a lot of shit just. It, it would just melt it, but then it would kind of just suck it in and like, okay. like quicksand almost. Okay, all right. For most of it. They did try to use trucks. They overturned some like buses to try to reroute the lava, and it helped. It worked a little for a little while, but then. The lava kind of overtook a lot of that. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Frank because I'm gonna say three because this seems pretty easy compared to just other natural disasters. Yeah, if I'm not the guy in charge and I don't have and I'm not on the rescue team, and I'm just a civilian there and I have my goal is to get uh, me and Aaron and my dog and just get out. I think I could survive. We could do survive that pretty easily. Pretty well. Yeah, you're not going back for the kids. Is what you're saying? Because you, I don't have kids. So. You'd be like all the kids. No, I'm just saying all the kids in the children's hospital are dead, and you're just gonna be like, I wasn't on this, the the rescue. If team, it's on sorry. my way, I'll pick them up. Get, jump in the car. We'll go. <laughs> okay. Come on, kids. Hop all in right. the hop in the car. Hop in the trunk. We'll we'll get you out. Fair I'll enough. get as many people as I can out. We have a rescue team but for I, a reason. That you shouldn't be obligated. But if I'm not, you? you know, I feel like I'd interfere. I'd be a, a, in the way if I try to. Yeah, you know, get get in the rescue team's way. Mm, got it. I would help if I can. If I could help, I'll help. But if they're like, we got this, I don't know what I'm doing. But that's if I like, can drive people out of there, I will. That's what I say to my wife when she's carrying the groceries in from the car. I go, "Oh, did you need help? I didn't want to. I didn't want to get in your way." You say that you, all the time. You do that all the time. To me. You had a good rhythm going. I didn't want to. <laughs> it seems like you had it. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I'm right, crampy right. style. Oh wait, we didn't get Janine. Nope, she's gone. Forget it. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Right, Janine, got, Janine got taken by the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the movie Twister from 1996. Oh, Andy, M, Andy M, we're not in Kansas anymore because we're in Oklahoma. There are mm. many tornadoes and you are on the road. One has already claimed a cow is one claiming you. 
That's a good one too. See, now that's another one where if I'm on the road and there's a twister around and I, my goal is to just get away from the twister, you know, and I'm not a ch- storm chaser, I just turn around and go. I know it's not as, it's probably even more complicated than that. I feel like just turn the car around and go the other way. No, because I feel like you're onto something here where if you feel like you can drive away from this problem, it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, now, granted, perhaps you can't outrun a tornado, but you're going to feel like y- you turn it in the other direction and just slam the gas as hard as you can and get out of there. You're going to feel that way no matter what. I think so. But uh, but again, granted, it's it's the middle of nowhere. And I, I know this, the, the point of the movie was they're unpredictable to, for, to a point. Like you only know a twister is going to happen within the, a couple of minutes and that's not enough escape time. So I get that. But if I'm already in a car and my goal is to just get as far, as far away from the twister as I can, I'm putting it at four below volcano because I feel like the twister is going to move faster than the lava. Good point. Wait, wait. So, which, is, which is the easier one? Higher? I don't know why I can't. Higher, yeah. Higher is okay. the easier one. If you Sorry. could definitely survive, that's one. If you can't survive, it's eight. So I agree with Frank, and I thought that as I was writing it in number two, that I was like, wait, this is faster than a volcano. <laughs> I should put this at four. Yeah, but you could probably outrun it. the lava for the most part. Odds are a twister is going to be a little faster. If it's if it drops right in front of you, mm. that's a problem. You know, it might not be as easy to, to outrun. I don't know. I feel like the twisters in that movie... They were messed up. They were strong. Tough. Four for Frank. Two for yeah. me. Cuddles. Five. Five for Cuddles. Lots of ones and Ooh. threes. Neil thinking he could outrun the twister. So was Robin and Christine. Very good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A couple of fives and fours, but lots fours, of ones and threes. threes. Okay. All right, Aaron. We're ready for the next one. Okay. The next one is Independence Day from 1996. Now we're you live in a go. major city and the aliens are blowing stuff up. We don't realize for a little bit what their weakness is. Achoo! So can you survive the night? Is that a little baby sneeze? Need a baby sneeze. <laughs> All right. That was a sneeze? I thought that was the, was the laser sounds. <laughs> oh, no, it's supposed to be the cold. Yeah, their le- weakness wasn't lasers. Oh, that's right. That's right. The virus, right? We give uh, uh, the, the, the aliens a, a cold. And... <laughs> I think that's a tough one because if you live in the major city and they once they start blowing it up, if as the premise said, I don't think there's very far you could, you're going to be able to run unless you're in the president's helicopter or plane like it was in the movie and you're already taken off. I don't think you're, I don't think you're getting out of that one. So I'm going eight on that one. Wow. I don't think you have a chance unless you're in the tunnel like Vivica A. Fox, her kid and the dog. Very few people survived those uh, cities being exploded. It's true. You know, a lot of people were underground. That helped in subways and stuff. I think people survived that way. But if you're just out and about and that that uh, alien ship takes out a major landmark and that ring of fire starts spreading, I don't think you're outrunning that. It's true. I'm going six because I got to leave a couple spaces for things I know I'm not surviving, even though... I feel like there's you got a chance with aliens. You got a small chance if you were not in the initial blow up area. Well, that's the problem. I think in this scenario you are in the initial blow up area because that's right. You live in the major city and they start blowing shit up. Because go just going off Independence Day, once they hit something with that big laser, the whole city was gone within mm. like sixty seconds. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think, think you're getting out of that. The last movie was Independence Day. That's right. What we just asked. Oh. Yeah, but at the same time, though, they here's the thing. If we're being completely, you're right. You're making a good point, but that's not where the movie starts. The movie starts with them slowly moving. They got a couple of as soon as soon as the radio report comes over, Frank, that aliens have entered the atmosphere. I am in a car, going far, are you? far the fuck away. Yeah, are you think I'm staying in Manhattan well, to see how just, it shakes out. Well, you know hindsight you're, you're you're basing it off of that you know they're gonna blow shit up but if you're in that situation all of a sudden aliens are floating over the city you're probably not gonna think they're just gonna start shooting any second 
because they would have done it already it's yeah, probably yeah, gonna so, be your yeah, thinking i am i'm not thinking let me stick around in case they're really nice and i get to meet yeah, them first that's not we, what i'm thinking we, we see how these movies ended so we're gonna we're gonna leave yeah and case in point the busters am i going to <laughs> case, case in point i already moved the way the fuck out of the city to avoid bullshit so i'm that's already kind of halfway there and the movie hasn't even started yet. <laughs> i'm putting it at eight because i think if we're going off of they're starting to fire already if we're at that point and i'm in the city i don't think you're getting out of that unless right. you got a helicopter i got six cuddles seven look at this seven. oh there's a lot of twos coming in and ones look at this i don't how are you getting out of that i, I mean i mean unless you got like a flying confident. car yeah they're very confident all right what's next aaron okay all right this is the only one that might have been slightly irresponsible of me because i haven't seen this one so frank will have to That's guide right. you through it this is the day after tomorrow from 2004. Oh, New York City has got a bad case of the day after tomorrow's when the ice age begins. <laughs> Are you getting the cold shoulder? That's all I could write because I don't. Know yeah, that was a good movie. movie. That was a good movie. Um, very good. A lot of you know technical things that were wrong with the movie, but a fun movie to you know as far as action and sci-fi and stuff like, and some crazy you know, not sci-fi but like effects and things like that go some unrealistic things like them being there was a scene where the cold is coming down a hallway and they outrun it like it's like it's a you know like it's a murderer yeah you know i don't know if that i don't think that's very realistic but if we're going on to just the basis of the movie if you're living in new york and this ice age thing hits based off of what happened in the movie again it was a natural disaster it kind of came in pretty f quickly. I think I'd be able to survive this one. This one, yeah. you just got to keep your powers out. So you got to just keep warm, as warm as you could be, as this instant chill comes over. And like just because what happens is this cold comes in and it instantly like freezes you. Yeah, it rained. It, it rained for like a, a couple. It's They got really, really bad rain. And then that, a big yeah. wave. Remember the wave came? A big tidal wave came, and then yeah, just, every that was the only thing. But that's why I don't. You know what was very weird? All right, so there's big. Fa I'm not spoiling anything, but there's a shot in the movie that can't exist. It takes place at the New York Public Library. That's where they. Oh yeah. Okay, so now it's a cool shot for the movie, but the street doesn't exist that they sh that they film this thing. So the the New York Public Library, in reality, faces a building like across the street from it is a building there's not a street that faces it and they have this wave this tidal wave coming at them up that street toward the new york public library and it's just a weird shot that doesn't make sense if you know the layout of new of manhattan but so the initial thing you'd have to survive is that tidal wave which a lot of people you know got wiped out of and in, in that then everything freezes like instantly mm -hmm. so you'd have to survive both those things it wouldn't be easy but i think i could do it a little better than independence day so i probably gonna go with it would be tough so i'll go with six on that one uh, just a note this is not a john cusack movie right Frank? Mm -hmm. no that is man, jake just gyllenhaal totally... and dennis quaid Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. Dennis Quaid. Okay, because uh, someone thinks it's a... I can't read fast enough for who it is. No. Somebody thinks it's a John Cusack movie. That one was called 2012, I'm pretty sure. And that was another disaster Robin, movie. It's called The Day After Tomorrow from 2004. Yeah, it was Gyllenhaal, right? Gyllenhaal and... Uh, what was Quaid. his name? Dennis Quaid. Mm -hmm. was played his dad. Good movie. Wor you know, worth watching. It was a fun movie. All right, so I got it at six. It's a tough one to survive. Not impossible, but still very, very difficult if you live if you live north of, they drew a line across the middle of America. So if you live north of this, you're, you're, you, got, you got problems. You're mm. on your own. Cuddles, where are you putting it? Three, I can do it. Oh, okay. Mm. Got to keep them fires going. I did it at five because again, I feel like you just hunker down and burn some fire, and you can it's not, last. Yeah, it. it's not easy, but you, if you're in the if you're in the city, 
you got to start a fire. You got to know what's coming. You got to, your power's out. So uh, again, and the flood, mm. big giant tidal wave comes through and wrecks a lot of shit. Mercury says Cuddles and I are on the same path. All right, Aaron, next one. <laughs> okay. The next one is The Happening from 2008. The plants have betrayed us. I repeat, the plants have betrayed us. You're living in a major city, and if you get too close to plants, it gives you the motivation to end it all. Take a chance. Chlorophyll or Endurophil? And yes, that's me. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a good day. Um, that's so a what is this, the plants? Po- the plants co- you con- never saw this? No. no, they convince you to kill yourself? Is that what it is? Yeah, they release like a chemical into the air. Okay. And it fucks with your head, and then you commit suicide. Hmm. Ooh. Within like a few seconds. That seems hard to survive. To it's hard to survive. Talk to Mark Wahlberg, though. He somehow... You figured it's it another out. One. That's another one where they outrun the wind, which mm. I don't know. They say, oh, here it comes, and they start running, and somehow the wind doesn't get them. Okay. Do we believe in science and wearing masks in this scenario, or how there's does no it... masks? There, there's, I don't. I don't remember seeing mask one in that whole. Anthony, we're dead. We we live in the freaking. I can't. Eat. We're dead. I don't even know what. Yeah. It... Well, here's the catch to that movie. It only it really attacked large groups. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by plants, for the most part, you were okay. It attacked large groups because those were the bigger threat to the plants. Hmm. This was the M. Night Shyamalan movie. I don't know if everybody saw it. but Okay. I feel yeah. like I would survive this, but to Cuddle's point, I, could, I, I can't survive the allergies I've been suffering under for the last two weeks, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, like it. This, this is definitely a two. Yeah, there's too many. There's too many. But you know what? Then I could survive because I can't keep a no, fucking plant alive. Two means you can't survive. Oh, wait. It, two means you can't. All right. So the, oh, fuck, man. Did you ruin your whole list? No, no, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, two, one means you. That's the easiest thing to survive. Mm. Eight is it's the worst thing. You can't survive it. All right, then I'm at six because that's I, it's not an eight, but it's definitely a six. Okay, I got about five because I, I think if we're inside, we I don't think we have plant one in this entire house. Yeah, no, I can't keep anything alive other than like my kids. So oh, there you go. And I don't think we're not in the city. We're not surrounded by too many. I mean, regular suburbs. I think we'd be oh, relatively okay. I think we got it like a 50 50 shot. So that's why I'm right in the middle at, at five. You survive the possum in your house. You can survive plants. So I'm not that's worried true. About you. That was true. That was not easy. I'm going to put Are there any possum num- movies on this list. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's number one for you, man. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm going to put it at number four. I, I feel like I could survive this probably. Sorry, no. Someone's asking again. Number four was the day after tomorrow. I don't know why, but nobody heard me say that. I mean, a lot oh, of people yeah. didn't hear me say that. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, we all. The day after tomorrow, that was the okay, ice I'm age one. Someone else asked again. So. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, right. that was the ice age one, and then we just did the happening, Mark Wahlberg and Night Shyamalan, that whole thing, that disaster of a disaster movie. All right. All right. Aaron. Two, uh, three more to go. I have one, two, and seven available here. I have one, two, and eight. I have one, seven, and I'm playing Frankie C style today. Man, one, seven, I already got eight. I got my eight locked in at Independence Day. I got to see. This is going to be interesting. What, what disaster movies do we have left? Here we go. Okay, this one is Armageddon. Watch your... Oh, I'm sorry. 1996. Watch your asteroids because they are falling from the sky. We're not leaving without AJ, but are we leaving without you? <laughs> okay, so who are we in this situation? Because you if Armageddon... This, you know, remember in the beginning when people were in the city and they were just getting... You know, you oh, survive... The... You don't get hit with the asteroid. It's the idea that once the asteroids are hitting other, you know, things... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how you doing? Okay. Armageddon. All right, so... So wait, is this... Can I not... survive an asteroid hit? Yeah, well, a lot of them, and it's also a lot of panic, and you're not one of the people going to the asteroid to destroy it. You're not that group. You're in the city when the asteroids are hitting. Oh, okay. there's a lot of panic. Okay, yeah, because there's a yeah in that movie. I don't want to. Sp- uh, I, can I spoil the movie? Ben Affleck wins, basically. Sure. Go ahead. So, 
in the in the beginning ish middle area when stuff starts to hit earth it's just little asteroids like the size of cars at first that hit the they hit obviously major cities for some reason uh it all they all kind of attract the major cities attract the asteroids for some reason um but then that's the only threat because every because the main asteroid that would wipe out the earth it, it turns out to be defeated spoiler so i think the so just the only answer, threat sorry yeah, go ahead just to answer a question in the in the um chat yes the mission is on the way it's not going on forever it's just going on for as long as it was in the movie so relief is going to come okay I think I, I think I have a good shot at surviving that. I'm at seven. Hmm. Because the big threat is the big asteroid that's going to wipe out Earth, and they take care of that. <clears throat> I, I feel like there's nothing here that's out of my hands. I don't know. Yeah, the only major threat is again those littler asteroids hitting the buildings, taking out a lot of stuff. But the odds that those little guy, those little asteroids are going to take you out, uh, you know, I think I think you'd be all right. All right, Relatively. I'm I'm putting Armageddon at one. Cuddles. I'm putting it at two. Oh wait, yeah. that's why. All right, yeah, I I missed I messed up my own rule. I'm putting Armageddon at one. I put it down below. <laughs> I took I put it at seven, think, thinking that it was I could survive it easily. But one means I could survive it easily. Here's what I'm worried about getting Aaron here. The the disaster films I thought were coming <clears throat> have not come yet. There's much more disaster movies than I thought there were. There are a lot of them. I'm trying to think of which ones you're thinking of. We got two left, though. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Go ahead. Two more. I got seven and eight. Frank, you got what? I got two and seven. Cuddles? One and eight. You came very... So Cuddles Cuddles is playing Frank's system to a T. Frank's actually playing Frank's system just off by one. He's got two and seven. He's got second and second to last instead of first and last. Yeah, Armageddon's my number one. I could survive that the easiest. And Independence Day, I don't think I'm getting. I don't think anybody's getting out of. It. Interesting. Okay, Aaron. Okay, this one is Jurassic World, 2015. Your day of fun at the theme park is interrupted when the dinos escape their enclosures and remind you that you are on an island and there are no refunds. Are you a survivor, Saurus? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna put. I'm gonna speak up first and put this at eight. There's no way I'm out running a dinosaur or smaller dinosaur or anything, especially if I'm on vacation. I've definitely had some turkey legs and some ice creams, <laughs> a little slower than usual, and I'm slow to begin with. So no way I'm surviving. And I did not see Jurassic Park coming on this list, uh, but there's just no way eight. Just the amount of dinosaurs, flying dinosaurs and fast running dinosaurs and big scary died. Like there's just no fucking way. There's no way I'm well, surviving that. All right. Here's my question. In that movie, <clears throat> the attack have all the people in that movie for the most part are centralized in like the the theme parks like main thoroughfare, like where all the restaurants and stuff are. Right. That's where the big attack happens and it's mostly the f- little flying dinosaurs. Pterodactyls or whatever the hell is flying around. Most of the, you know, I think they take out, I don't know the number, but let's say a dozen people. Well, and one of those was Jimmy Buffett, by the way. I'm just one of those, Jimmy Buffett was there. But there were hundreds of people in that in that run. Right. So I'm going with the numbers here, and I'm saying I'm going to survive that one easily. Because once they no, get, it's not once they get initial, indoors. Come on. It, well, once they get indoors, that was it. They were fine for the rest of the movie. Mm. And the main threat, the people who were threatened the most by the raptors and the whatever the hell else was on the island were the main characters that were fighting them. Yeah. All the all the civilians were fine after that initial attack. Are you going to put this at number two? I put it at number two. Yeah, I got very mad with you. That's Why? crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> if there I, I is could... anything I learned from the original Jurassic Park is that dinosaurs, those velociraptors, whatever they have with those talons can fucking open doors. So my ass is dead. <sighs> dead at number eight okay no i'm dead well here's the thing all the raptors were not there were no raptors loose in that movie they had the raptors under control if there's all right if you want to be dead dead, you could be dead dead. i'm dead that's fine (laughs) but i think i think i'd do all right in that in that situation i get you if me and aaron were stuck in that situation i'd get us to safety and we'd be all right 
That's that's what I'm thinking. Anthony, I'd probably I'd probably kick you so you so you'd fall behind <laughs> and and I can get away. Trip me up. <laughs> you give you a little yeah. <laughs> and I, I yeah, stop and running. I, and I know it's not the, the exact Jurassic Park movie we're talking about, but I'm Newman dying taking a shit. Like there's what? just no what? way. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. One hundred percent. I I do what I can to get out of there. Speaking of which, hilarious representation of the Coates uh, sign tonight with the Jurassic uh, Park. All right. There. Love the tie-in. Thank you. All right, you Aaron. You know about this. You know that. All right. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, okay. One more left. I have seven remaining. Frank? Seven. Cuddles? Number one. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> I'm about to get errands. Big time. <laughs> this is the final one is Cloverfield from 2008. We're back in New York City, where a baby sea monster has awakened as cranky as can be. How do you like your odds in the city where the baby sea monster never sleeps? Oh, yeah. I had kids. I can do this. Hmm. See, I think my list is probably the best list. I, uh, one of the best lists that I could have come up with. I think in all, in all the top fives, I think this is the closest that I've come to a perfect list. Because I have Cloverfield at seven. If you just go based on the amount of people that were affected in each one of these things, I think I'm pretty close here. I got Armageddon at one because there was some there was some damage and a lot of people, you know, people got killed. But I think your odds are okay of surviving that. Jurassic World, again, your odds are a little better. Once you, once the people got indoors, they were fine. Volcano, get out, run the lava. Twister, turn turn around, run the other way, but a little faster than the volcano. The happening, I don't think you're going to do well if you're in a... If I'm not where I am right now, if I'm in the city, that's a problem. But again, I, it's halfway because I'm kind of halfway and I'm not in the middle of nowhere and not in the city. Day after tomorrow, mm-hmm. hard to hard to live through. But I think it can be done. You just got to keep the fires going and stay warm. Cloverfield, a lot of people. The, the city, the city was destroyed. A lot of people got messed up. Buildings knocked down. It was it was a disaster. Independence Day, hardly anybody survived that. It was they had to start the world over again. Yeah. So I think I got a pretty good list going. That's not a bad list. I hate my list. I don't think my list is good. Um, I was playing this whole game waiting for, I kind of fucked up because day after tomorrow might've been it, but I was playing this whole list waiting for like the earthquake movie and the tsunami movie. Cause I don't think I'm surviving those things. Yeah. And it does not the middle, like the middle of the Island. Like there's no tsunami that's going to come and hit and come all the way through to get us. Oh, contraire. I think it's coming from our direction. It could, it could, it could, uh, there, there depends on the size of it. I mean, there, there. If it's a big one, it could go in. Uh, it depends. But I got accused of cheating and changing my answers. I did not change my answers. The only time I changed is because I, see I some thought scratches there. I don't know. I, I misspelled for some reason. I added two. I put two M's in tomorrow, so I just crossed out the tomorrow that I misspelled and wrote the right one. Armageddon. I put here first because I misunderstood my own the the rule of. Easy to survive, easy to survive ones are at the top. So I put it here first, and then I went, "Oh shit!" Easy to survive, and I, I immediately put it up there. Those are the only two mistakes that I made, and they weren't changing the answers. It was because I one was just a misspell, and the other one was because I forgot the the order it had to be. The only so one I, I found really scary. I mean, if I'm going to just talk about it, I just Cloverfield. Maybe it's because I was living in New York City at the time. I I, I found that one very scary. Oh, that was a good one. I love that movie. That was good. I've never seen it. Oh. Good movie. Right. Definitely check um, that one out. What happened? A baby sea monster wakes up and, and starts to thrash and just doesn't understand what's going on and just takes out bridges and takes out buildings and stomps Central Park. And it's just one of these. And it's weird because, like, all the kids are, like, douchebags. So you don't really root for <laughs> anybody in this movie. But it's very interesting because of the I don't know I just I remember being like ah where I'm not really with the other ones I don't know why yeah. and it's a um, found footage uh, uh movie yeah, you know yeah. it's a guy on a camcorder through the whole movie it's uh, that's kind of like a Blair Witchy type movie and it's about them trying to get from one end of uh, of 
from one part of Manhattan to another to try to rescue so, like a girlfriend, the, the the main character's girlfriend that's trapped I in a building. You see it. Cuddles. It's I think a good you, movie. I think you'd like it, especially since you knew so much about all the other ones. You were like executive yeah. producer on Volcano, I which love, was very I cool. Love, <laughs> I've seen like mostly all of them. I really, really like them. The one thing I, I will say that I know that I cannot survive, like I'm just going, I will be one of the first is like a zombie apocalypse. Like I'm not even running. I'm going. Oh, you saw some on my neck. Like, that is, yeah. I, that's crazy. No, I was keeping zombie apocalypse open for one of these slots too, and it never came. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, they're just zombies. They're not. It's not like a plague that you know. Mm. It's not like the the wind where you can't outrun it. You could fight zombies. You know, mm -mm. Mm -mm. zombies are you could take them down, and that's pretty. Mm -mm. I'm not going to say it's a walk in the park, but it, it's easier than fighting aliens no. with spaceships and shit. Who did? Mm -mm. Different types of zombies. There's those ones that are like really slow moving, like the Walking Dead, kind, and then there are those ones that are like really oh. fast, like that other show. Yeah, I'm fucking. That's crazy. that's a different story. Yeah, the running ones, the ones that are just rabies, you know, they're just freaking yeah. running full speed at you. That's a lot tougher. I'll give you that. Yeah, I'm just gonna like figure out a way to take myself out because I'm not <sighs> that. I'm, okay, let me throw this in, uh, into this discussion. I am legend. Will Smith survives the zombie apocalypse and he's completely by himself except for he has a dog. Hmm. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Give everybody a second here. I am legend if you haven't seen it. Here's a spoiler. The dog doesn't make it. <gasps> There's no way I'm surviving that scenario because if if I even do make it to the point and I have a little dog keeping me company, okay, fine. But once that dog doesn't make it, I'm putting a bullet in my head. It's over. I don't give a shit anymore. Like I don't want to make it then. But what if you're the so? But he, the reason, the thing that kept him going is because he was trying to find a cure. And like uh, if and you're the scientist who was working on a cure and you're close, right. you wouldn't keep going. No. No. Okay. <laughs> it's over. I'm sorry if this is common knowledge, but do you know that the title doesn't make sense with the way that the movie is written? That's not what I Am Legend was supposed to mean. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a good story. Yeah. I, I thought it was after the the Bob Marley song. No, it's in the um. I don't know if it was a novel or a novella, but the original story. It's the 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 creatures are now <laughs> society, and every now and then he's like the boogeyman, and he comes and he snatches one of them, and they tell the story of him. Like some people don't believe that he exists and some Got people it. are like, oh, yes, he does exist. And he took my, you know, like Bigfoot, like, like right. uh, the Chupacabra. So it's the idea that I am legend because some these this new society treats him like the boogeyman. Some believe him about him and some don't. And some get to experience him because he keeps snatching them. And that is the that's the that's what the title's supposed to mean. Yeah. They, OK, they hang on a second. Them. I have All a question. Right. Mm. Is the are these stories being told while the zombies are just chatting it up <laughs> around the campfire? I like, mean, what's happening here? I think that they speak telepathy. I don't know. I didn't read the novella, I but they, I found it interesting that that that, that it's. Com I find that much more interesting than the actual movie. Yeah, they definitely communicate with each other. Like, if you watch the movie, they they're they're ones that are like in love. You could see like they're all, you mm. know, they communicate like animals do. You know, like the very uh, um, what's the word primitive? They mm. they're like go back to like that kind of state of mind um i thought it was just that he spoiler alert eventually succeeds and they tell his story yeah well he, that's what that's what that's they, that's but, the movies version but not the, of the, oh the, the movie right i got it got it got it got it but what yeah. i will say is that what i hope that this would tell you what this would show you this bt5 is that you are all stronger than you think you are yes endure phil people <laughs> that was good that was really good yeah. Uh DJ Great Shanigan job. says 28 days later, that movie. You know what fucked me up about that movie? The fact that it didn't take place in America. Mm. That was your only problem with it? Or? It made me so uncomfortable. It made it so real because it made uh, I was immediately like, oh, I don't I don't know where to oh, go. Because you didn't know your surroundings kind of yeah, like, what yeah. the hell? where am I? Is this a farmhouse? Is this a, where's the New Year's neighbor? I don't know. I'm not familiar with this neighborhood. It was totally uncomfortable. I feel like it was a great move putting that in. I think it was in England. It takes place. 
But again, another I scary think so. scenario. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, um, great job, Aaron. Yeah. Another, an- another home run with the uh, blind top five. Damn right. It was still, good. I feel she, like Huddles, you enjoyed this one. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed them all. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're all great. Movie one, you know, we're we're all movie people, I think, in this. Uh, yeah. Who doesn't love a good movie discussion? Yeah, but you know what's good about uh, what she's doing, what makes Aaron so great, is it's not just ranking movies. Like, she always she gives a little twist of, like, how would you survive in this movie? Which makes right. it fun. Breaks up the breaks up the blind top five, you know? Yeah, she, she errands it up. She does. That's she a great, does. It's a great thing to do. Yeah, she really does. I think there was a... No, somebody said something funny that felt like it was a t-shirt. Now I missed it. And now we'll never get it back. Damn it. So if you like the way Aaron uh, thinks, Aaron talks, Aaron writes, go pick up that old book. It's all Aaron, baby. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a book available. That she wrote completely. On, it's on Amazon. Digital download. Buy a hard copy. Link in the description. There you go. Link in the description. Order that baby up right now. Um, don't forget to become a member because the members only show, a, uh, the 420 show, excuse me, is members only. So sign up today. Appreciate you all, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Show me potato salad. Maybe we should go now. Go ahead. <laughs>